The 93X half ass Morning Show podcast is sponsored by Standard Heating and Air Conditioning. Regular furnace maintenance can be your wallet's best friend. Slashing energy bills and warding off those inconvenient breakdowns that seem to strike at the worst moments. Don't leave it to chance. Schedule your tune-up today at standardheating.com. The 93X half ass Morning Show. 93 X. Animal fart facts that will blow you away. Lemurs use their farts to have stink fights. They rub their hands in the stench and wave them at their enemies. Blue whales can create fart bubbles so big you could fit a horse inside of it. Termites fart so much that they are responsible for 3% of global methane emissions. Manatees use farts to help them float. They have pouches in their intestines to store their farts. Herring fart to communicate with each other so they can form shoals when predators are around. A plane full of goats once had to make an emergency landing because the goats were farting so much that they set off the fire alarm. Come on, come on. Get in line now for the Chamber of Farts. Dare you enter the Chamber of Farts? Don't be afraid. There aren't any ghouls here. Only farts! Showtime! Ah, dang, what is that awful noise? Sounds like I'm back in high school living with my dad again. <laughs> a lot of flatulence. Let me tell you something, Josh. What's that? First off, welcome to our radio show, the 93X half Fast Morning Show. By God, that's us. It's Thursday. Thursday that's morning. Nice of you to say, but I'm supposed to be here. Welcome to you as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah I was talking to you. I was talking to everybody. Oh. Well, that's nothing, me then. Nothing personal. <laughs> Animal fart facts, dude. What's up with termites? I didn't know they were giving off so much methane gas. You learned something on the 93X morning show. Is that all of them? I liked how herring communicate with farts. <laughs> you can say a lot with your butt, can't you? You can't. So Josh. I, I rip on my son, rip, <laughs> uh, for the terrible choices he makes with what he likes to watch. You know, what he likes a lot to of watch. YouTube and things like that. And then I uh, see he's watching something I'm like, oh, nice, about animals. That's great. It's not the usual dumb stuff. Or, like, there's a, it's a lot of football, a lot of trick shots, which are cool, but then a lot of really stupid stuff as well. <clears throat> and I see this, and then I see it's not only animals but animal farts, and I thought, I'm raising him right. <laughs> His mom has nothing to do with it, but finally something the two of us could bond over, animal farts. Is that what gave you the idea to bring that to our program? Well, it's, be it's become kind of viral, and it might be really old. I don't even know. But uh, we've been sitting on it for a while just looking for a day to squeeze it in, and here <laughs> we you, are. Did you go up to him? Were you like, send that to me, man? <laughs> Absolutely. <Yeah. laughs> Give me that link, bro. <laughs> Daddy's going to need that for work. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone, thank Josh for bringing us animal fart facts this morning. <laughs> Thanks, Josh. You. Thank you, Josh. Hey, there was a bunch more, too. I didn't know I needed it, but now I do. I know. Hey, you know, Wapple, you do a lot of bar gigs, mm -hmm. and uh, you're a very social individual, our little Muppet here. You could bring some of these up at the bar, like Cliff Clavin from Cheers. Oh, that'd be <laughs> great. Or do uh, animal fart fact trivia night. Oh, yeah. That's a great one. Yeah. But you're right, Josh. That is a great idea for when you're at some of, doing one of those gigs and there's kind of a lull in the conversation. Hey, do you want to hear a fart fact? Animal <laughs> fart fact? <laughs> <laughs> Problem is, you might run into somebody's like, what the hell's wrong with you, man? <laughs> <laughs> no. Who hurt you? <laughs> I'm an adult. <laughs> one time at my bar gig, though, we were talking about whale poop. Yeah. How, did, how did that come up? Oh, it we comes up pretty naturally at most bar gigs. Yeah. All the time. Well, no, we were like, what What happens to it? Is it like a giant solid form? Is it like liquidy? And then it just went on from there. Did you look yeah. it up? Yeah, what did, did you, you find learn? out? Yeah, it's just like liquidy, and they like omit like a cloud, and it's just like a brown mm. cloud. Okay, oh. that sounds familiar. Could you imagine if it was solid form? What? <laughs> <laughs> like the the just, size of a shark? They would sink giant, ships. Yeah, giant whale poops <laughs> taking down ships. The Titanic didn't hit an iceberg. It hit a whale poop. <laughs> Frozen whale poop. I'll be damned. You know, that's just stuff you don't think about often enough. I'd never thought about whale poop wobble. Yeah. Thank you. Mm -hmm. No, I don't that's think That's what you can get at my bar gigs, <laughs> which will be starting up in October. Oh, our Coors Light wild parties? Mm-hmm. Oh, you mm -hmm. can't get enough of those. You do a pretty good job of covering your, your true emotions. 
Yeah, how are you feeling right now? by the end of last hockey season, you were ready to throw yourself off of a building. <laughs> <laughs> you wanted the Wild just to fold as a franchise. <laughs> <laughs> Please don't make the playoffs. Yeah. Please don't make the playoffs. I do not want to do more. And you you're a, a huge hockey fan. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty good job yeah, of covering your real feelings. Yeah, towards the end, it gets tough. I think you learned that from listening to my last man standing ads. <laughs> You're saying a guy that's being insincere? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, this All is right. great. What's Can't that? trust a fart, Jesus said. We should turn the animal farts into a dad fight. Uh, dad fight. And then he wrote, you're welcome. Yes, thank you. <laughs> yeah, that would be good. You know, Randy Shaver, uh, he loves fart and poop humor. So even, I, even if you won't admit it. He, he likes to complain about every dad fight topic for the most part. Not every time, but most of the time. He would not complain about this. No, you're right. He uh, He's a big poop humor guy. <laughs> and I think he'd be more willing to admit it now than a few years ago. We're getting a looser version of Randy the last few years because I think he's cruising towards retirement. I'm going to guess and, what, and next I, year? He'll retire next year. He's is so close. That'd be he's my guess. Yeah. He at it. Definitely. That would be my guess. And plus, I think he's just taking himself a little less seriously as he gets older. But, oh, Randy loves fart and poop humor, man. <laughs> it gets him every time. <laughs> Do you remember when, when you and I were about to have our colonoscopies? Randy, I don't know how he had <laughs> access to all these gifts and photos. He sent so many poop-related bits <laughs> both and, times. And he seemed to have them at the ready, too. You know, There was well, like one after another. Yeah, it, just was, it was an onslaught. Yeah, it's like he had a folder on his phone. <laughs> I, uh, eventually, I'm like, all right, got to block this guy. This is too much. He sent more videos, disgusting <laughs> poop and fart-related videos. He sent more to Josh and I, then I think your typical seventh grader would be able to. You know I, what I mean? I totally agree. Hey, we got a text wondering, Nick, are you going to be going to Adam Sandler when he comes to town in November? <laughs> I, I see we've got tickets to give away. He uh, announced what? this tour yesterday. We have tickets to give away to see Adam Sandler? Yeah, November 12th, Target ah, Center. I misplaced my prize sheet. Ah, fart. <laughs> if I could bring it back. I know it's around here somewhere. Did uh, you already request tickets? No, a listener texted me this morning already on the topic. Pro wrestling Mark Jesus. He said, the countdown begins 59 more days until Adam Sandler comes to town. And you, now, okay, people have been busting my chops about that. So now you're saying we have tickets to give away here on the air. We do. All right, here's what I'm going to do. Now, hold on. Yeah, go we, ahead. Here we are, uh, masking true emotions, I'd imagine, like the last <laughs> man standing at, or wapple at a bar gig. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to, because I got this kind of pull in the building, and so does Josh. The rest of you, is, you got a ways to go. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get my hands on front row tickets to that show. And then I'm going to throw them in the garbage. <laughs> <laughs> well, first, I'm going to offer them to someone. And they're going to go, what? Front row tickets to... And then I'm going to tear them in half. I'm going to throw them in the garbage. <laughs> Pull a little Power lighter move. and set them on fire. I, I, I never got a prize sheet. so. Well, I printed you one. Eh, I must have thrown it in the garbage uh, on accident. Well, dang it. So, yeah, if you could... Thanks, Cubby. Pump one more of those out for me. Yeah, no problem. Uh, friggin' okay, sure. I'm happy to give them away to folks who want them. Oh, there's plenty of people that do. That's for sure. Mm. Yeah, I'd, pretty, I'd be I'm very pretty excited. stoked to see Adam Sandler. I don't know why you would be, but yeah. Uh, God, I wish you had the same poll Nick and I do about getting I free, know. really good tickets. I know. I'm on my hands and knees trying to glue the tickets back together that Nick ripped up. <laughs> and he's urinating all yeah. over them. <laughs> front row, maybe. Maybe we'll see if we can get some front row tickets. I don't know. That's Boy, news. that'd be great, wouldn't it? That'd be a sweet prize. Oh, uh, you meant for us personally. I'm, yeah, you're right. Well, no, for a prize. Yeah, or so awesome I, to or give away I, front or, row. Or so I can do my garbage can bit. Yeah. I, I saw him many, many years ago in second row. Would this be like Saturday Night Live days or after that? Ah, eh, God. I mean, uh, it was like 1996 or seven. So you tell me. I don't know what he was doing at that point in his life. Here it is right here. Adam Sandler. Sunday, November 12th at Target Center. Okay. You tell me when you want to chuck these out to the Brotherhood, Josh. 
Well, why not do it now since we brought it up? And uh, you just got to take your phone out and you got to dial a number, 651-989-9393. Text the word lunch. Anybody lunch. get the reference? Graves. Graves. No, I don't. Lunch Lady Land. Is that really what it was? Mm-hmm. Oh. Okay, mm-hmm. yeah. Graves, our uh, text word guy, is very creative yeah. with these. So lunch. Text lunch to 651-989-9393. And again, you get a shot to see Adam Sandler coming up Sunday, November 12th at Target Center. Furnished by Live Nation. Tickets go on sale tomorrow at noon. There you go. Was he calling it the I Miss You Tour? Yeah. Something like that? Mm-hmm. It's also going to be Milwaukee the night before and Des Moines the day after. He's, He's going, going to walk you the night before? <laughs> He's going to be in Milwaukee the night before on the 11th, and then the 13th, he's going down to Des Moines. I've taken Dana for walks. He poops right away. Yeah, right away. Good, <laughs> good. Like a good boy, too. Why have you already studied his uh, tour schedule? Are you some kind of a sick stalker or something? Are I, you planning on going to multiple Adam Sandler no, shows? No, I just Googled to see if he was, if this was a one-off or if he was doing a full-on tour. It looks like he's doing a full-on tour. Sick stalker, then, is the answer. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. Was yeah. It, I think 25 dates or something like that, he said. Uh, this is funny. Um, somebody texted in, Nick. You mentioned you're going to request first uh, front-row tickets. <laughs> You're going to tear them in half in front of someone who wants them yes. and throw them in the garbage. Yeah. And this person says, physical tickets? Nick's adorable. <laughs> That's true. I don't remember the last time I had physical tickets. It's no. all on your phone now. I it know. Is. Ain't it a shame? I miss collecting ticket stubs when I go to shows. That used to be a big thing when I was a kid. I'd, yeah, I'd I save to every twins, you know, random Twins versus, uh, you know, Cleveland day game. You know, I'd save a ticket stub to that from the Dome. I have every ticket stub, and I miss... Being able to hang you really out saved things. them all. I mean, I have some of them, but you really made a point of saving every damn last one of them. Every last one of Did them. Did you have uh, like your uh, lift tickets or what are those called? Lift. What are those called when you go skiing? I yeah, think you yeah, got yeah, it. Your lift, lift, your lift passes. Lift yep. passes. Did you have those on your jacket? I went skiing once uh, as an adult, and it did not go well, and that was the end of my skiing career. Oh, I, <laughs> I just remember in high school, that you know, was people would have, yeah, like to, to the fo- point where they'd be hunched over. They mm-hmm. had so many on, they had to put them all on their jackets. I, I just did laundry not too long ago. Like uh, my, my mom was helping me out, and she took one of my jackets that had some ski passes on it. And she was like, oh, I got to take these off. And I was like, no, 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 you will not. That is from 2018. <laughs> that stays on there. <laughs> oh, you got to cut them off every year. No, yeah. I can't. What's you the point to. of saving your lift ticket? It's so you uh, can show where you went. Yeah, it's kind of a flex. Yeah, it's yeah. like, oh, look at me. I was at Giant's Ridge. Oh, well, I, here I, like I was. In, that, I, I like w- saving that kind of stuff. Like, I usually save, like, bracelets from concerts to see how long I can save them until like they the, fall like, off. Like the rich kids in high school that come back from, like, Cancun mm-hmm. at spring break, and they'd leave the wristbands on from senior frogs until, like, <laughs> oh the, the, the next fall. Just so they could always let people know where they were. Yeah, look at this coup de gras. It was in <laughs> Vail. Coup de gras. <laughs> you were in Vail? Yeah. Dude, Check I never out. had anybody. Look at, look at December 10th. I didn't know it was a flex. I thought it was just kind of something you did. Like like Dana said, collecting you know your tickets for your, your favorite show or something. I think it depends what kind of person well, you are. Well, now i got to call a bunch of people and tell them they're dickheads from 1989. <laughs> <laughs> uh, obviously, you guys know my struggles with technology i i do now that you brought it up josh or the listener brought it up i do miss just having a pair of tickets in your friggin pocket it, it's such a, a process now to download uh, is it an app is that the yeah. correct term oh i hate that stuff just i mean i remember back in the day when my my dad and i split viking season tickets with another guy and they would show up at the door a big book and just boom, you bang them down on the table. The freaking the, or say twin season tickets. Yeah. A friend of mine had twin season tickets that came in a big book. And don't That's get cool. cute with that. It would be thirty-five pounds. <laughs> that and it was is just, way cooler ah, than electronic. I just uh, things were so much simpler back then. Uh, when I started working here, um, I started going to more concerts, and so I would save all my ticket stubs. Um, that's when it started, and you can tell. The difference, like what year it drastically changed. Oh, the price? To electro- you mean? No, to oh. electronic tickets. Because I have all of these tickets from, you know, like five, four years ago, but the last two, three years, all I have is just like empty things on my phone. <laughs> F me running. Josh and I could probably show you some ticket stubs from the concerts that we first started going to in the 80s, and you would absolutely crap your pants. 
over how effing cheap it was. Yeah, that yeah. Hurts. I mean, the, the fees are more than what we paid mm-hmm. for tickets back in the day. To see crazy, crazy got, good bands. Too. Yeah, I mean, in, in 1987, <laughs> the number one album in America was Motley Crue, Girls, Girls, Girls. The number two album in America in the summer of 87 was White Snake their self-titled album with the still of the night and the here I go again and the is this love they were touring together the two bands with the top two albums in America were touring together and the price of a ticket I think was $15.50 that makes me want to cry <laughs> when you guys can you get a movie ticket for that price right. when, when oh you yeah guys good were point. younger did you ever think it would be like a thousand dollars to see Taylor Swift or Bruce Springsteen well that's or something. Taylor Swift wasn't even born yet Wapple that's a ridiculous <laughs> question <laughs> But no, I, I never would have assumed. Absolutely not. Have you shopped for a vehicle at all recently? I know. Yeah. I, I mean, we a went house. to the we went to the Stanley Cup Finals. We went to every game of the Stanley Cup Finals in 1991. No ticket cost us more than twenty dollars. Yeah, in high school, I remember I bought twin season tickets to, for the Upper Deck General Admission. You know, I think for so for 81 games, it was like 120 dollars. Something crazy like that. Yeah, the outfield three dollar tickets. Yeah. Uh-huh. yeah right. F me running. What else is going on around here? Ask me about CrossFit Jesus. He's pumped. He's like, wait, Adam Sandler, November, fall colors, and the Thanksgiving song? Let's go! (laughs) (laughs) This was made for Nick. Yeah, I have a feeling he's probably going to bust that one out. (laughs) Crazy Fish Guy Jesus mentions you can still keep your ticket stubs when you screenshot them. I I was wondering if anybody does that, screenshot your... Digital ticket. I don't know yeah. how to screenshot. Um, Raven Trucking Jesus says, I pay an extra $5 fee to get physical tickets from shows. Just oh. got them from Pearl Jam, he said. Is Didn't that right? know you could do that. Good to know. I hadn't heard of that. Yeah. All right. Well, stay tuned. In the coming days, Adam Sandler fans, I'm doubting that's the last opportunity you'll have to get your hands on tickets to his upcoming concert. That's a hot ticket. But yeah, that was uh, 2006, 2000. This is hard to believe. I had like 27 years ago, I saw the friggin' guy. <laughs> 1996. Wow. Is that is that uh, correct arithmetic? 1996, Can... yeah, 26 years. Jesus yeah. Christ. Man. That would have been four. <laughs> I don't think I was, I was not born. Almost born. Internet porn star Jordan Max is back in the mix today, right? Yep. Making an in-studio appearance? Yes, sir. I wonder what she's been up to. Anybody know? Has she been out of town making some movies? And no, I'm not sure. She didn't. She didn't really. Didn't really say. I'm glad she's coming back. It's about time we get a chance to talk about sex on this program. Yeah, <laughs> yeah we, we don't. Give, we, we, can only, we can only do that. When we have porn stars. We can't do it just the five of us. We have been in a dry spell with that topic. <laughs> <laughs> That's for sure. She's just scrapping that Jordan Max out there making porno movies, right, Cubby? That's what I hear. What a gig! Yeah, I saw her pink Jordan Max mobile in my neighborhood the other day. I didn't understand what you said. Her, you know, her pink. She's got a pink SUV, you know, bright pink SUV with a license plate that says Jordan Max, and oh, it was parked in my neighborhood recently. She must have been visiting a friend or something. She has a license plate that says Jordan Max. Yeah, that seems dangerous. <laughs> <laughs> with the double X's. Yeah. Well, it's like it's like J R D N M A X. Oh yeah, like it's that. like an abbreviation. Mm-hmm. What's her address? Since we're giving out her information here. <laughs> She's Louise. I would like to keep a lower profile if I were her. Maybe we should ask her about that. (laughs) I'd get a license plate that said Dana. (laughs) (laughs) Just so people say, you know. Who's that? (laughs) That's interesting. Yeah, there's, you know what? There's a a couple of local well-known people I've noticed have their name or moniker around there. Really? Yeah, yeah, I wouldn't want people to know what I'm driving around. I just, uh, you know, uh, there you go. Not my thing. Mine is less about like the stalking and more about like I don't want them to know that it's me flicking them off on the road. <laughs> yeah, I guess they're pretty easy to track down if you when you road rage, Ashley. Yeah. Do, do you uh, do you often as as you would put it flick people off on the road? <laughs> no, no, no. Oh, okay. You no. should. No, not since uh, it's been you yeah know, life or death out there. Basically, these days uh, people will come at you with a chainsaw. <laughs> exactly. For yeah, and they'll murder your family <laughs> because they didn't get the respect they needed yep. after they brake checked you on Highway 62 for no reason. <laughs> They'll even murder your stick family. (laughs) 
Buffer on the car on the back. Yeah. I don't know what the hell he's talking about. <laughs> that little stupid stick family that's always on the back of some of the cars. Like, yeah. hey, Jimmy we, plays soccer. We've got Jimmy, he's a track star. <laughs> We're getting old, Josh. Speaking of porno, it's the other true. day I saw an internet porno video. <laughs> you, are you following this? Yeah. <laughs> and uh, Katie Morgan was described as a cougar. Is she the tiny little blonde? With the distinctive voice? With the distinctive voice. Yeah. She's a cougar now. That's crazy. <laughs> well, how old is she? Uh, well, well I, I just looked up. She's 43. Jesus. Is she already 43 years yeah. old? Yep. You have to be like over 35 or something, right? Well, I'm not focusing on the, <laughs> on the parameters. I'm just saying that so it, I, it I've seems never... like yesterday that Katie Morgan was the, the hot blonde my damn on the porno scene. And now I uh, I found a video where, you know, uh, six over-the-hill women happened to attack one of their stepsons. Oh. And it was just bizarre to see Katie Morgan well, isn't that... Play, that, play that role. I don't even recognize her. Isn't that really? kind of what... Um... Jordan does. She's the stepmom thing, is what he said. And she's what? She's Your in her thirties. She's younger yeah. than you, Dana. Yeah, she? I think she's. She's. I think she's. Yeah, I think she's like two years. I'm 38. I think she's a couple years younger than me. Uh, time yeah. flies. Katie so Morgan. So I forget. I, I haven't seen her porno movies. It's on my watch list. <laughs> yep. <laughs> but what was the? She would host all the shows. Uh, there like, was some... an, an HBO show. Was it like Cat House or? No, it was. <sighs> It was I, called Pornocopia, looks like. No, it wasn't that's that. That's not it either. It was it, more it, mainstream than that. Yeah, it was some... Uh, that sex show? It's We're getting closer. You're right. She had some very popular HBO show 20 years ago. Had to have been in that neighborhood 20 years ago. Where I think they... they uh, the word I'm looking for is they uh, researched or reviewed sexual habits around the world. Yeah, it was more... Innocent. Yeah, uh, here's I guess. It, it, some of it was kind of medical, actually. Yeah, it too. Was more, here's it was a cleaner take on sex. Yeah, stuff. but she would host the show nude. But anyway, was it Taxi Cab Confessions? No, no, Cat no, House? no, 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 no. Hmm. Yeah, okay, Cat House was definitely one that I'd watched. Yeah, I, I, I can't believe it's taken us this long. Is everyone the on their Deuce? Com- the Deuce. It says no. it's a TV show about porn. No, that, that doesn't sound right either. Ah, oh, it's gonna bother. Me. Can't see anything. Oh. But Man, you I'm know. just watching some of her videos right now. I'm kind of distracted. I'm reading like some of the the movies she's in. It's it's great. Cyborg yes. hookers. Cyborg. <laughs> Bad <laughs> girls behind bars. Fat Ooh. girls. Bad girls. Bad girls. <laughs> Cyborg hookers. God dang it! What was that show? Is my text machine not working, or maybe no one's listening? I mean, so here's a list of the HBO shows or specials she's done: Real Sex Extra, Pornocopia, Katie Morgan on Sex Toys, Katie Real Morgan sex. Porn 101, Katie Morgan Sex Sex Tips. Questions? Anyone? All right, fair enough. It, she's yeah, she's done a ton of those. One of yeah, those. wow. Now, I'm gonna go with Real Sex. Yeah, pornocopia. so Real Sex and Cat House would probably be the more popular ones. Yeah, whatever. Yeah. But so I mean, like- just it, it seems like yesterday I was going to twelve dollar Motley Crue concerts, and Katie Morgan was the hot porn actress <laughs> on the block, and now here we are. She's a cougar, and it'll cost you a grand to go see Creed. You know? <laughs> if you're in your forties or fifties, you're a cougar. Oh, okay. Yeah, all right. So sixties saber tooth. Yeah, that's yep. what that means. Okay. Katie Morgan gonna be or not Katie Morgan? Uh, Jordan Max gonna be here later. Maybe she knows Katie Morgan. Eh, oh, probably running cool. the same circles. Up all night. Give me a break. That's funny. <laughs> I forgot about that. Ask me about CrossFit, Jesus. Is the Katie Morgan show called Up All Night? No, mm-hmm. that was a USA Network show, wasn't yep. it? Mm-hmm. Hosted by some other gorgeous blonde. I remember that. At any rate, for you Katie Morgan fans out there, the rest of you, it sounds like you're not terribly familiar with her. Oh, no, I know, I know. Yeah, I know, I've, I've, I know I've never... Katie. If you heard no, her no, no, speak, I... you'd know who yep. she was. I think. Oh, okay. I mean, I mean, familiar with her porno movies. No, I've never seen one. Okay, I have. 
You have. Yes. She that, was also that, in the Kevin Smith movie, Zach and Miri make a porno. That movie sucked. Oh, I didn't see it. Oh, maybe Wobble, maybe, maybe you can answer this question. What does Kate, this is just kind of some inside information and something that will uh, titillate the Katie Morgan fans. Wapple, what does Katie Morgan uh, typically say when she's being serviced? What does she typically say to the individual who's pleasuring her? I can't remember. She says, get it. No. <laughs> yeah, she oh, does. That would ruin it for me. Yeah. What? Why would that ruin it. it for you? No. What's no, wrong with girl. saying get it? I don't know. I don't like that. <laughs> yeah, you, you, get you, it. No. You always, uh, what's what do the young people say, Josh? You always ish everyone else's yum. Oh, what, yeah, what, ick everyone else's yum. You ick everyone. I Wapple. don't know, get it's weird. She says get it, doesn't she, Wobble? Yeah, she does. Yeah, he knows. And that high-pitched voice, too. All right, so we've established 40s and 50s, a woman is a cougar. 60s, a woman is a saber tooth. Yes. More anxiety than hair, Jesus said. In the 70s, they're a woolly mammoth. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think that's flattering. <laughs> Take that back. Rhonda Shearer was the lady who hosted USA Up All Night. Our, our listeners, most of them, are wildly informative and very smart. Three, four of you? Yeah, total pricks. Is she? But the majority of you are wonderful. Yes. So I'm looking her up. Doesn't look like she's a porn star. I, I just remember the name, and she was a buxom blonde. I couldn't Rhonda tell you Shear? much more. Maybe was she married to Harry Shearer? Oh, well, it just says Shear. Shear. Oh, Not okay. Not the same as the Harry guy. And I don't mean Harry literally. I mean the dude who uh, <laughs> was in Spinal Tap, and he does the voices for the sim. We got to uh, take a break. We'll be right back on the Half Fast Morning Show. There's a douchiness to them. The 93X Half-Assed Morning Show. Hey, Minnesota. CJ Ham here. Huddle up for a second. You need someone to go to extra yard when your furnace is out? Give the ball to the certified pros at Standard Heating and Air Conditioning. They've been at it for 90 years. Ready? Break. Regular furnace maintenance can be your wallet's best friend. Slashing energy bills and warding off those inconvenient breakdowns that seem to strike at the worst moments. Don't leave it to chance. Schedule your tune-up today at standardheating.com. Who are you? What are you made of? And where are you going? What will you make of yourself? Sometimes, the hardest questions are the ones you ask yourself. If you're lucky, the answers are easy to find. If you're smart, you'll start looking here. At one of our 23 community colleges and more than 40 locations. To learn more, visit findyouranswer.com. Find your answer at Virginia's Community Colleges. Stupid news on the half-assed morning show. Oh, wow. All right, I'm extra excited about our opening stupid news story. Because I love to hear stories of carjackers eating a big fat turd. <laughs> a carjacker douche in uh, by damn New Hampshire. He carjacked somebody. He took off in the vehicle. The cops gave chase. And then the chase ended when the dumbass carjacker lost control and smashed himself and the car smooth into the local police station. (laughs) That's so awesome. It's fun when they make it easy for the cops. Uh This garbage pile is 53 stinking years old still acting like this, Cubby. He's 40 years older than the average carjacker nowadays. (laughs) Carjacking really has turned into a young man's game. (laughs) Ah. He goes by the name of Barton Tibano. To be specific, he stole a van at gunpoint. I've never met a Barton. Have you guys? No. No. Mm -hmm. I don't even know a Bart in real life. I know a Bart. Me either. What? Bort? It's, it's an inside joke. It's an obscured Simpsons reference. Oh. <laughs> oh, wait. I take that back. I knew one Bart. But yeah, I've never known a Bart. I used to work with a guy named Bart. Is Bart short for Barton? I mean, that would make sense. Hmm? Bartholomew? Never... Bartholomew? <laughs> Bartholomew? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you have the same problem one of my best friends does. Say that uh, name again. Bartholomew? Yeah. A friend of mine also insists on adding an L at the end. Say it again. Bartholomew? Yeah, why Why are you putting an L at the end? I don't know. <laughs> A friend of mine does the exact same thing. He's been doing it for 50 years. It's Bartholomew. 
Oh, I would have put a L at the end too. They're not yeah. a mule. Bartholomew mule. No. Bartther? <laughs> <laughs> what is the full name of Bart? I don't know. The dude that I used to work with named Bart, he was uh, too odd. I never uh, wanted to get into much of a detailed conversation with the guy. This guy, the carjacker, Barton. Like you said, he stole a van at gunpoint. And there he goes. He's off racing through town. He blew through a few red lights. He sideswiped some poor bastard just trying to mind his own business. But Chicken Dick here couldn't handle the <laughs> van. And at one point, he got all sideways, and he ended up barrel assing into the neighborhood cop shop. This guy, Barton, unfortunately wasn't injured in the crash. As a matter of fact, he tried to run away from the scene after the collision, but cops hit him uh, hit him right in the uh, areolas with their tasers, Ooh. and he laid down and got arrested. He got charged with about everything he can think of. And he won't be back on the streets for some time, and I couldn't be happier about it. Yeah, too bad they didn't tase him, arrest him, and tase him again. <laughs> if you've always wanted to learn to cook and eat more meals that you prepared yourself but have lacked the motivation, this ought to do it. A DoorDash driver in stupid-ass Florida was caught on somebody's doorbell camera <laughs> spitting on a food order yuck as he was delivering their dinner a big thick loogie ew lung butter oh. oh dude i've never heard it called that i don't like that yeah when he says it it disgusts me yeah <laughs> it's what if i say it lung butter oh that was kind of cute yeah that had yeah. a very pleasant tone to a little it little different you've never heard of lung butter before <laughs> smashley no I'm, I'm happy to be the one to, to uh <laughs> Wake you up to that one. <laughs> what celebrity would you pay extra for them to spit in your food, Nick? Brittany Spears. Yeah, easy answer for you. She mm -hmm. can put all kinds of things on my food. <laughs> uh, mine's one of two. Um, Jensen Ackles or Jimmy Garoppolo. Yeah, that would make choice. sense for you. I couldn't afford both. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Brittany could pee on my dinner. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What do you mean, yeah? I, I'm not surprised. Oh. Hey, hey, Ashley. Yeah? Lung butter. <laughs> no, really, somebody should slug this prick right in his face. That's like I, sick. That's really sick. Like I said, the customers got it all on doorbell camera video. And the word is they think this DoorDash bitch hocked up the lung butter in response to a lousy tip, and I'm going to get to that in a minute. So in the video, the driver sets down the food on their front step. He snaps a picture, picture. picture to prove he made the delivery, and then he three times he spits on their food. Yeah. Oh, and it says here he was also talking to himself. Oh, that's not good. Yeah. A 13-year-old boy and his mama were the ones who placed the order. They said they almost puked when they watched the video. They were watching in real time the dude deliver their dinner. I'm glad they did. Yeah. yeah. Uh-uh. A grower than a shower, Jesus says, he would take lung butter marinade on his dinner from Kat Dennings. <laughs> She's a voluptuous lady, she by sure damn she is. is. I've seen her on television, Cubby, Kat Dennings. Uh, yeah, I've seen her commercials for True Broke Girls. She's oh, very yeah. attractive. Oh, yeah, I like her. So for, for whatever reason, the kid, is, what happened? I'm sorry, I just read a text. I, Who, uh, whose saliva do they want on their food? I can't read this. It got me. Oh, they want more than saliva? Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Who would say something like that? <laughs> <laughs> For whatever reason in this story, the 13-year-old boy is quoted up and down. Why are we talking to a kid if the adult is also there? But anyway, the kid said he and his moms paid around $30 for this order and 
added a $3 tip. I mean, yeah, that's pretty cheap. It's not the best, but... It's pretty cheap. $3 for a $30 order? Yeah, I mean, it's cheap, but at least it's something. I'd like to know how far she drove. Who's she? The DoorDash driver. Oh, he. I thought it was a oh, dude. Sorry. Yeah. I'd, yeah, I'd want to know how far they drove. Maybe it was just a couple blocks. I don't know about you, but I always take the first number. My order's $30. That first number is three. I at least do three times two for my tip. Is, does anyone else have a system like that? I if they're if they're driving it to me, I always do at least ten bucks. Yeah, that's that's Whatever. usually my case. Too. Yeah, that's the very least I do is that first number times two, the very least. I mean, but but Smart. of course that doesn't justify a grown ass man dumping uh, expectorate on somebody's <laughs> meal. Just does saying, it, that's kind of cheap. How how does it uh, how does it work? Maybe somebody who's done it can let me know. Um, can you turn down? You can turn it down, right? Or no? Turn what? If you somebody can, puts in an order, can you just yeah? Let, you, yes, there's another door dasher that mm-hmm. might pick, pick it up. Pick it up, oh. yeah. Same yep. thing with Uber. It like lets you know um, that there's an order available, and you can go in and decide if you want to pick it up or not. So uh, that's interesting. I did not know that. So this driver could have. This driver knew he was getting a a, 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 a small tip before he showed up. I'm not sure if you know uh, what you're getting tipped before you accept the order. Maybe you have to accept the order, and then they let you know what you're getting tipped. Well, they think he sprayed their order in an act of revenge. They alerted DoorDash headquarters. The driver won't be working there anymore. I know I repeat myself when it comes to stories of bad behavior, but it throws me every time. These are grown folks doing things like this. Okay, somebody texted in and said, if you deny the order, you get a negative rating. Oh. Oh. Well, I mean, yeah, I try to throw a pretty good amount of cash when someone's delivering my dinner. If I was with somebody and they said, well, the the meal is $30, I'm going to give them a $3 tip, I'd say, no, you're not. Yeah. What's the matter with you? Okay, well, then I'll give them cash since you're such a cheap. Atheist Jesus said they do know the exact tip before picking it up. Okay. Well, then what the hell? I mean, this guy knew what he was getting into. Quit being such a... You're being an animal is what you're, 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 you're no better than an animal. Do you guys leave reviews every time? I always forget and then it re- will remind me like two days later, like, hey, don't forget to do this review. And I feel so bad. because Review? I, th- I don't even know what you mean. Yeah. When like you door dash, usually after they deliver oh. the food, it'll like send you a notification and be like, hey, you know, how was oh. your meal or whatever? Rate your driver. And I always forget. And I'm like, ah, I feel like they're going to. I've never I, gotten I've one of those. Mm-hmm. Oh, really? But do you go through DoorDash or yes, whatever it is? So I go through DoorDash. I, I usually just go through the whatever restaurant. Oh, okay, that's why. I've never made one of those door. I've never ordered food with my phone, but I have I've only done it a couple of times outside of like pizza. You know, obviously it's addicting. You have to be careful. <laughs> it's expensive too, with all the like, mm-hmm. service fee, delivery fee, convenience fee. Not if you have the Dash Pass. <laughs> <laughs> which you'll but pay that you have to pay, fee. yeah, which yeah, you have to pay, pay for. for. They give me every time I do it. I uh, don't, I don't know how to do that stuff, but I, I have, in the past, learned how to order an Uber with my phone, and I have left reviews. They, they do the same thing with Uber. If, if my memory serves me correct, something pops up at the end of your ride that says, "Did you have a good time or what?" I have responded to those. It is most fun when I've been able to say, "This dude." Couldn't drive for Jack Squat. Oh, you've done that? <laughs> oh, absolutely. I told you before, one dude sent me and a lady across Highway 55 through a red light. <laughs> We're screaming, red light, stop. He never touched a brake. We went right over four lanes of traffic on Highway 55 and Highway 101. Somehow we weren't killed instantly by oncoming traffic. So absolutely. Scary. And then there was a guy who was drunker than I was. I absolutely, those were the probably the two times where I said, this dude should not be driving for a living. <laughs> <laughs> what does a yellow light mean? Slow down. Okay. What? <laughs> yellow light mean? I would have been better off having Jim Ignatowski drive my taxi. <laughs> A couple of times. 
Now, here's a guy who pees in the sink. <laughs> Been there. Yeah, I've peed in the sink mm-hmm. in my day. Yep. No matter where he is, at a house, at a bar, at a restaurant, at a live episode of AEW Dynamite, it doesn't matter. If he has to take a squeege, he lets your buck in the sink. I've never done that. Um, I guess I've never been in a situation where I considered it, but also I don't have the height. Dana, you've got the height to do it. Yeah. I'd have to aim up. Mm-hmm. I mean, I have to lean way back <laughs> and just hope for a good arch. We used to have um, uh, one of those, uh, like, wash tubs in the laundry room. A mud sink. Yep, yeah. and, and um, we only had one bathroom growing mm-hmm. up in my house. And so, yeah, if you had to go really bad, you were either hitting the sink or outside. I'm so sorry, Mom. Yeah, when I first moved out, I lived with two of my friends. We had one bathroom, and boy, did that mud sink get used oh, downstairs. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. There was one time I got caught. I was it was in college. I had, I was hanging out with a girl. We got back from the bar. We had been drinking. We were hanging out in my living room. I went to my room because I had a bathroom in there to go to the bathroom. So it was my own sink. It wasn't peeing in the communal sink, but so I had all this pee in the sink. Didn't know she had followed me into the room, and she looks at me, and she goes, what are you doing? I look at her, I go, nothing. <laughs> I don't think she believed you. <laughs> what do you think I'm doing? I had, the, I had the same situation growing up. We only had one bathroom upstairs, but we had a laundry room downstairs with a big laundry sink, and I I put number ones in there all the time. Maybe my uh, most interesting moment hanging it into the laundry sink was I had a beer party. This is when I was a little older, maybe 18 or 19, and I was still living in that house. And I'm hanging it into the laundry sink, and there was no lock on the door to the laundry room. And this, and this gal, who I knew, you know, I'd known her for a few years, she knocks on the door and she goes, what are you doing in here? And I saw I'm taking a whiz in the sink. And she said, oh, uh, that's okay. And she came and she closed the door and she walked in and kind of stood pretty much shoulder to shoulder with me and asked me if I would be her boyfriend. (laughs) While I was in the middle, I'm urinating in a sink at probably 2 o'clock in the morning. That was the time she chose me, she chose to ask me to be her boyfriend. Did you say yes? No, I said no. (laughs) Then peed on her, right? Yep. (laughs) (laughs) This is what you get. (laughs) You know, actually, before we get too far with this, I was talking with my bros at the beer hall not too long ago, and one of them who's 50, 51 years old, said in his entire life, he's never washed his D in the sink. And I said, how can you be 50-some years old you never wash your D in a sink? Yeah, you do the old rinse down quick. The old, yeah. I've washed my sorry unit in sinks from one end of the state of Minnesota all the way to the other. It was a peace of mind type of thing. <laughs> and also, I think, in between appointments for you. I'd imagine. <laughs> Next. Next. <laughs> you three will go at the same time. <laughs> oh, God. I didn't know what you meant by that at first, but yes. I mean, I'm and sure my... because you're courteous I'm very and respectful. A- absolutely. And I'm sure my de-washing did very little to prevent STDs from growing all over me, but at least it helped me rest easier that night knowing that I made some effort to combat whatever the complete stranger had just passed on to me in the throes of passion. I was, I was completely shocked there's any dude at 50 years old who's never washed their D in a sink. That surprises me too. All right, back to this guy who exclusively urinates in sinks. Sure, we've all done it now and again. You, when we were growing up, you're drunk. What a, this guy, this is the, the only way he'll do it. The story says that he, quote, shocked the internet. I, I doubt that. <laughs> um, he mentioned this on Reddit. I've looked at Reddit once or twice. I doubt some guy hanging it in the sink shocked the Reddit crowd, but I'll let that go for now. He never pees in the toilet bowl. Always the sinky sink. And part of his reasoning is that sinks are, quote, the perfect height for him. He does this no matter where he is. And he has a, a system <laughs> to where no one will suspect what he's doing in the john. Like, say, if he's at a friend's house, he flushes the toilet so it's not suspicious. Then he runs the sink and he rinses out the urine. And also, running the sink will lead folks to think that he's washing his hands, but he never actually does that. That's a little side note. He never, ever washes his hands. Sometimes he will rinse his tallywhacker 
in the sink after he pees in it. <laughs> Let's it sit there for a little bit. And he says, I've done this ever since I was tall enough to reach the sink. That makes me angry. I can't imagine finding out that like somebody that's been to my house has done that and I haven't known. Can't wait till you have a housewarming party at your new place. <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting a step ladder and I'm peeing in your sink. <laughs> I'll be right next to you, Jeff. No. <laughs> One big sword fight <laughs> between the four of us. <laughs> well, folks in the comment section on Reddit uh, called him gross, disgusting, foul. Somebody said, your sink smells like urine and you are vile. <laughs> but here's the deal. And I'm sure no one will be surprised by this. There is a Reddit thread for people who urinate in the sink, and it has over 33,000 members. No. <laughs> There's a Reddit thread for everything. So there you go. I mean, I'll pee in your pool or your shower every single time, but I usually use the toilet if I got to go uh, one skis on, on dry land. Yeah, in the commune where I grew up, we had the same thing. We didn't have enough bathrooms for everybody. And um, we, uh, but our laundry was in the basement, right? Just big open basement with the washer and dryer, and then there was a drain. So we would use the drain. Mm. Oh, okay. Yeah. Never yeah, the, the floor assumed. drain. Yep. Yeah, yeah absolutely. I know what you're talking about. Okay. Yeah, yeah. We had no choice as kids. We had five people in the house and one stupid little, stupid little, stupid, smelly bathroom. You use the floor drain in the laundry room. You use the laundry tub. He says sometimes we had to go outside. Broke-ass cheap parents buying a friggin' house with one bathroom. <laughs> Texas Carpenter wants you to know, Ashley, that if he gets invited to your housewarming party, uh, he'll take it to a higher level by dropping an upper decker for you. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> I've never seen that or been a party to that, thankfully. Have you guys ever in any way been around something like no, that? No, I think it's kind of like the Mile High Club. Everyone says that mm -hmm. they've done it or they've seen it done, but it happens like once every 3,000 years. <laughs> I've threatened it multiple times in my life. but you never threatened. But never had, uh, never uh, with the exception of you thought I was actually going to go through with it. Anybody upper decks my toilet, I'll kill them. Yep, absolutely. <laughs> That's the only correct response to that. You burn yeah, the house down at that point. There's mm -hmm, no coming back. Mm -hmm. If you're oh, not no, familiar... I'll, sa I'll save the house. I'll just kill you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, if you're not familiar, it's where you poop in the tank of a toilet, which uh, is fun, I'm sure, when you flush it. Yeah, I wonder, Nick, if that's ever actually happened. I, I I'm sure it's happened you know, once or twice, but it does seem like that's a reoccurring joke. Yeah. Once every 3,000 years. So Let's check Reddit. I bet there's a Reddit thread for Upper Deckers. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, I bet there's pictures. Gross. There was a big drugs and weapons raid at a house up there in Canada. The cops turned up nine illegally owned and obtained firearms, ammunition, a pile of what they believe to be crack rocks, machetes, bear mace. I don't know, fairly typical stuff. Unfortunately, these days, that's all pretty typical stuff. But the cops also confiscated a sword. And when the cops posted a picture of everything they found at this guns and drugs house, the sight of the sword had video game dorks all over town wetting their little pants. Because this was not just any sword. It was a replica of, and help me if I go sideways here because I have no idea what I'm talking about. The sword is a replica of Frostmorn, the Morn Blade of the Lich King of Warcraft fame. It's a pretty sweet looking sword. I hope everyone so knows. Cool. I, I hyped it up quite a bit because I, I assumed you would know what I'm talking about. Yes. Okay. I, I've never played the game, but I'm familiar with the sword. Warcraft, Frostmourne, anybody? No, I just looked it up. It looks sweet. Never into the game, but I know what it is. It's looks cool. like a replica running about 1500 bucks. Whoa. It says here, Frostmourne has the power to shatter or entrap the souls of its victims, and it can raise... The dead! Anna Nicole Smith, please. 
It's one of gaming's most iconic weapons alongside, see if I can grab you here, Kratos Blades of Chaos and Link's Master Sword. I was going to say, when you yeah, started telling are... this story, I was thinking, I was hoping it was going to be the Master Sword. What does it mean to be Link's Master Sword? That's the cool. That's the best sword in all the Zelda franchise. Yeah, the God of War's swords are pretty badass. Yeah. Too. So, is this what's happening? Because this is not something I'm dialed into. The famous weapons used in video games are being made into life-size replicas, and fans buy them up, and then they put on a cape and run around their basement pretending to do battle with evil. That's cool. I think they kind of more just hang them on the wall. Oh. Mm -hmm. Oh. Well, that's not as much fun as a grown man in a cape running around (laughs) his Well, I think you hang them on a wall, Dana, and then pray for a home invader. Yeah. (laughs) He's having it at the ready. Yes. Oh, Oh, that would be sweet. I want to make the news by just beating the hell out of some home invader with a master sword. Yeah, just uh, beheading somebody with the battle axe from Gauntlet, something like that. (laughs) Josh knows this. Many years ago, I went to a house party. I was seeing this gal, and she said, let's go to a house party where all my friends will be. Yay, friends. And I said, sure, I'd like to go to a beer party and meet your friend. And, uh, oh, oh, I believe it was her cousin's house. So as soon as we walked in the door, I met her cousin, this dude. And he says, hey, man, nice to meet you. And I said, yeah, nice to meet you. And before I was even done, he said, hey, can I, can I show you something? And I said, sure. <laughs> and he uh, said, yeah, something I want to show you in this room. And we went downstairs. And I, I figured maybe he had heard that I'm a rock fan or something. Maybe he was going to show me his drum set or his uh, Steve Vai collector's edition Ibanez. Uh, get to, he opens the door to this room. And the entire room and tall ceilings, kind of like we have here in the radio station. From floor to ceiling, all of the walls were decorated with samurai swords and katana. I, I don't know the verbiage, but you know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Boy, Was that I, his way of like threatening you? Like, don't, I, I don't break her heart? I really don't think so. I, I think I could have read that from his body. He just wanted me so. So I walked in and I said, uh... And he said, this is where I keep all of my swords. That's so uh, cool. I had a, a guy in our neighborhood had something like that. And uh, I was at the perfect age. It was awesome. Oh, you, you enjoyed it? Throwing stars, oh, cool. nunchucks, all kinds of swords. And the dude, yeah, he bored me for about a half hour. This is the sword that does this, and this is a Japanese, and this is a British, and this is an English, and this is a... And I just... No interest in those things at all. But it was just a... Kind of fascinating that I wasn't in the door for 30 seconds before this guy wanted to show me his sword room. (laughs) But that was expensive. Oh, I bet. X-Ray Jesus said, I know I'm in too deep when I knew it was the Frostmourne before Nick even said it. (laughs) And he goes on to say, also, World of Warcraft sucks. Oh, I don't like no. it. Your thoughts on World of Warcraft? Anybody here play it? I've never never played played it. I I always thought that I'd like it quite a bit, though. It yeah, seems it up seems my like alley. it does seem like something you'd like. That would be pretty sweet to kill someone with an energy sword, though, from Halo. Dude, I was thinking about killing somebody with a needler. <laughs> <laughs> What's that? I'm not familiar with a needler. Um, it's like a gun. It shoots like um, uh, they look like purple diamonds, like spikes. What purple game diamonds. is that from? From Halo. <clears throat> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you can get one on eBay for four hundred. I don't know if it shoots Whoa! though. Whoa. <laughs> Now, this here story, we'll wrap it up with this one. Mm, It would be a lot more interesting if it was legit. Instead, it's just some hot chick looking for more attention on social media. She must have been feeling ignored for an entire 10 minutes, God forbid. A hot lady in New York City who wasn't wearing much, she went out into the street holding a sign over her head that said, Looking for a Husband. And this gal's never lacked attention from men her entire adult life. So, again, we get it. You want to be famous or more famous. Yeah, she wouldn't have any trouble finding a mate. Absolutely not. I'm sure she's churning people down left and right. There's a reason I wanted to bring this up, though. Uh, She says it was a joke between her and her friends. Uh, I'm going to bet that she and her friends are about the least funny people you would ever meet. Yeah. (laughs) You cannot get a decent joke out of these people if you spent the entire weekend. That's my guess about... 
Uh, the TikTok video she made of her walking around with the sign has over 10 million views and so many likes since it was posted. <laughs> but Josh, the reason I wanted to bring it up, Josh could tell you this. The amount of clicks and friends you have on social media, that's the true way to judge the value of a person, isn't it, Josh? Oh, my gosh. <laughs> We worked with somebody I'm sorry, who said I'm, I'm that. I'm sorry. The look what? on your face right Ugh. there. I didn't mean to piss you off, but I just so badly wanted to bring this up. That was such a, a just such a vapid, terrible thing to say, and that person meant it. I couldn't believe you it. You actually said that? How? That was how you determined the value of a person. What Is was the, your reaction <laughs> to that? Essentially the same I did. Well, I thought there's no way you meant that. It was a right. joke, right? I thought they meant like if you have a lot of followers or something on the internet, maybe a company would say, hey, we'd like to sponsor this. I thought that's what they meant. Like there's a value to the amount of eyes, but, uh, of followers. But no, that, that person meant um, that's your value as a human being. Absolutely. Well, Nick, How many you people? You are just worthless. I, I am. guess <laughs> the amount of people who follow you on social media or like what you say or what you post—that is how you measure the value of a person. Josh, I'm equally parts proud and ashamed of the look I just gave you. <laughs> <laughs> the look I just made you have on your face by bringing that up because that was one of the more. Working in radio for 27, 8 years, you hear a lot of really, really stupid, self-serving things. That has to be in the top F and 5. I just couldn't believe it was real. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, she's perfect for me, but she only has 100 followers on <laughs> Insta. Yeah, so that must say something yeah, about her. She's a bad person. Right. Sports. On the 93X Half-Assed Morning Show. Man, I'm very excited, man. We Bulldogs, and we're ready to bite. Arr, arr, arr. You see? I'm excited, man. I'm ready to go. It's game week. It's conference week, you know, and this is going to rub off on my team. Don't make us release our canine. Arr, 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 arr. Arr, arr, I dig that guy. Me too. Uh, what the hell's his name again? I have is it, it around Connell here. Maynor? Connell? Mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't know how to pronounce his first name. A fellow named Connell Maynor. Yeah, the head coach of the Alabama A&M Bulldog football team. He barked like a bulldog during an interview the other day. <laughs> <laughs> and he looked adorable doing it. Yeah, he, he did. did. I like that guy. Me too. Uh, they, they play Southern this weekend. Alabama A&M versus Southern. And then he's pumped. And now his players are pumped because he barked like an effing dog <laughs> in front of the media. Ruff, 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 ruff. <laughs> so cute. And I like, too, that he kind of looked embarrassed afterwards. Like, <laughs> <laughs> just did that. Yeah, man, that, that just kind of came out. I wasn't planning it. He did. He did. He had just a vague look of embarrassment on his face. And then he went on to say how excited he was and this and that. Damn shame what happened to those twins yesterday. They fell behind early to the Tampa Bay Devil Ray, but they made a nice comeback. Walner, dong. Farmer, dong. Strudel, two-run triple. And they had the game tied up at four, but then in the top of nine, the Rays, Randy Arozarena, donged. And the Rays won 5-4. The twins had a runner in scoring position in the ninth, but Christian Vasquez, he struck smooth out. Still, everything's fine. What do you call that club again? The Cleveland Guardians. They also lost. The lead in the division still seven and a half games. And the boys start a series, a four-game series, against the stupid Chicago White Sox tonight. 6.30 on Bally Sports. Kenta Maeda is going to get the start. What, the Vikings play tonight? They, do. they sure do. Yeah. Thursday night, man. Thursday night football in Philadelphia. Yes, sir. Prime time Kirk Cousins. Here we go. Oh, Let's get some. <laughs> they are going to get pumped. <laughs> they are going to get destroyed tonight in Philadelphia. What time's the game start? I forgot to write this down. 7.15 on channel. Was, yeah. some, uh, well, Amazon. And I'm sure there's a local channel. Fox. Running. Fox. It's on tonight. 7.15. It just says Prime. What does that mean? Amazon Prime. Oh, uh, nice. I've got that. Okay. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know if I have that. We'll talk about all this uh, in greater detail in a half hour. Stay tuned for Josh's news report. There's a douchiness to them. <laughs> the 93X Half-Assed Morning Show. Hey, Minnesota. CJ Ham here. Huddle up for a second. You need someone to go to extra yard when your furnace is out? Give the ball to the certified pros at Standard Heating and Air Conditioning. They've been at it for 90 years. Ready? 
break. Regular furnace maintenance can be your wallet's best friend, slashing energy bills and warding off those inconvenient breakdowns that seem to strike at the worst moments. Don't leave it to chance. Schedule your tune-up today at standardheating.com. Stacking Benjamins with Joe and his good friend OG not only has great financial insight, it's laid back with humor too. The Len Penzo sandwich survey. I wanted to know, was it really cheaper to brown bag it every day or was it cheaper to go through the school lunch? And the most expensive sandwich of all, 46% increase. This is the first time a sandwich has ever touched five bucks. Before anybody gags on that, though, it's a great sandwich. Find out more by searching the Stacking Benjamins podcast wherever you listen. Half assed morning show. 93X. This student has had concerns there before and has committed some act of violence on another teacher, I think about a year and a half ago. I'm not sure what the exact attack was, but now this is a serious violent attack. A 14-year-old arrested after deputies said, oh, no big deal. He attacked a teacher with a pair of scissors on oh. Tuesday. The ninth grader at Bright Horizon Center in Florida was arrested after the student attacked the teacher inside a classroom as she tried to run away. The student allegedly chased the teacher into the hallway and stabbed her with scissors, cutting her ear. Yeah. The teacher received stitches, and the teen was taken to a juvenile assessment center for processing. That's the end of that for that kid. <laughs> it's about time those wealthy teachers got their come up and yeah. seriously With all the money and respect they get nowadays it's unbelievable the crap they go through that's pretty nutty right yeah. there man that is not right a florida mom's been charged with child neglect for allegedly abandoning her two-year-old son in a vehicle to go swimming for nearly 45 minutes while saying she wanted to meet sharks meet police sharks. yes uh, she did Police took 41-year-old Allison Daughtry into custody after a witness saw her leave her son in a car while she went swimming off a fishing pier about 10.30 a.m. Monday. According to the witness, Daughtry parked her car near the pier and turned up the radio before jumping into the water. She didn't appear drunk. She didn't appear like she was high. Just something was off. We don't know. They said she just jumped in the water and started swimming. 20 minutes later, the passerby noticed the small boy crawling around the vehicle. A group fishing off the pier also reportedly yelled warnings to avoid their hooks just for Daughtry to reply, I want to get hooked and I want to meet sharks, the report said, noting that sharks are often seen in the waters. When deputies arrived, she reportedly swam out even further before she was brought ashore in a rescue boat. By then, she had left the toddler alone in the car for about 44 minutes. Her son, who staffers at the nearby Captain Khan's restaurant, said was still in diapers. He reportedly ate lunch at the eatery before being picked up by a more responsible relative. Ah, Poor kid, 12 years from now, he's probably going to be attacking his teacher with his scissors. (laughs) That's how it starts, right? (laughs) And mom wasn't drunk, she wasn't high, just crazy. (laughs) Sounds like she was having a day. A naked dick entered Beaverton too many times. So he'll now spend nearly a decade behind bars. Michael Gordon Dick was arrested when neighbors called Oregon's Beaverton Police Department and reported Dick was standing on a bench in his backyard, naked from the waist down, staring into the neighbor's backyards. Police approached Dick to ask if he had ever stood on the bench. He claimed no, he was too ill. There was no way he could get on the bench, denied the accusations altogether. But another neighbor gave police surveillance footage showing Dick in various stages of undress, standing on the bench or a ladder, as he looked over the fence into his neighboring yards, masturbating. Dick already had a lengthy criminal history that included multiple convictions for public indecency. On Monday, a judge sentenced Dick to 90 months in prison. 90 months? That is a long one. Oof. A New Jersey ATV and motorcycle dealership poked fun at a group of would-be thieves who attempted to steal some of its inventory early Saturday morning. They posted a series of surveillance footage videos on their Facebook page with some funny comments and music. The first video, which features the Pink Panther theme, shows the men walking around a storage area of Ledgewood Power Sports. As unbeknownst to them, officers from the Roxbury Police Department had already set up a perimeter around the dealership. We're able to know that someone is on scene before they even breach our perimeter. There's no way out of there. Once you're in my perimeter with this security system we have, you cannot get out, except with a set of handcuffs. 
just uh, the next video shows them they realize the police close are closing in on them. The suspects are having a rough time trying to escape, but the dealership added some clown or circus music to lighten the mood. Oh, no. <laughs> Just realizing that maybe this wasn't such a good idea, our burglars are seen displaying not-so-terrific superhuman diving skills and every criminal for themselves behavior. We love how some jumped and fell flat on their face, the company posted. While they quickly realize PWC trailers do not make a great springboard for scaling a fence, the dealership wrote. The last two videos add more music and some funny commentary as the men were arrested by police. Authorities said they were called to the dealership at 4.12 a.m. and found nine people in a fenced-in area containing ATVs and UTVs and immediately took five of them into custody. Four others were arrested shortly thereafter in a wooded area behind the business. Well, God dang. I like that they had a good sense of humor about it. Uh, it's, it's, they said they had a lot of fun watching them look like idiots and then get arrested. <laughs> Uh, along those lines, a carjacking attempt in Virginia last week was foiled by the victim's stick shift. I've heard cops say that is the best theft deterrent nowadays, a manual transmission. I wouldn't know what to do. I always left uh, when I had a manual transmission. I definitely had like a more sense of security when I would like not lock my car. I'm like, ah, well, you know, hopefully they can't drive it. <laughs> Police say the incident happened about 5.45 a.m. on Labor Day in a parking lot. Three men, a victim who was driving a Kia Soul, uh, he was, uh, excuse me, they approached a victim driving a Kia Soul, but didn't get as far as they apparently wanted to because they didn't know how to operate the vehicle's manual transmission. Isn't that something? That's hilarious. Earlier that same morning, police there responded to an alleged incident involving an intoxicated suspect threatening a victim with a machete. No injuries were reported. Mm. Don't you, don't you sort of love the sound of grinding gears, Josh? Um, if it's someone else's vehicle, I don't mind. <laughs> <laughs> Good point. If it's my own, it makes me cringe a little I, bit. I suppose, I mean, I, I shouldn't say don't you like it. Don't you find it kind of comical? It is comical, yeah, certainly. Yeah. yeah. MnDOT traffic cameras captured a suspected impaired driver plowing into other vehicles on a busy Twin, Twin Cities highway yesterday afternoon with troopers close behind. The chase came to a crashing end after the driver paved a path of destruction, which stretched for miles. MnDOT footage first shows a white car struggling to stay on Highway 36. The driver initially kicks up some dust in the ditch, then he swerves away from an exit, but that's just the beginning. That same car hits a median and sends mangled metal flying, car parts and puffs of smoke shooting off. One squad car follows from a distance. Then, two more join the chase. The car keeps swerving and smoking with lights and sirens right in the rearview mirror. Troopers and officers are seen narrowly dodging some flying debris before the white car barrels into a long line of stopped vehicles, causing a chain reaction wreck in North St. Paul. Without even tapping the brake, he slams right into traffic. Lifting up the back end of that car, at least a dozen officers jump out, guns drawn, putting an end to a miles-long dangerous drive. Mm. Driver is in custody, and investigators say several people were hurt, but all are expected to recover. Man, what a mess. Then in Plymouth, four minors were arrested after leading police on an early morning chase yesterday after apparently stealing a vehicle. Authorities were dispatched around 1 a.m. for the report of a stolen vehicle in the area of Brockton Lane and Medina Road. Mm. Officers say the vehicle was being tracked by the car manufacturer and was quickly spotted by police. The driver fled officers, but they were able to use stop sticks to bring the pursuit to an end. Four minors in the vehicle ran away, but were ultimately arrested with help from multiple agencies. Jeez. Motor vehicle thefts in Minnesota last year reached record high levels, the highest since 2001. I'm tired of it. Yeah, me too. According to new statewide crime data and analysis published by the Minnesota Bureau of Criminal Apprehension, motor vehicle thefts increased approximately 13% last year. The increase didn't include carjackings, which actually declined last year alongside other types of violent crime. According to the BCA, auto thefts most commonly occur when the vehicle is unoccupied and the owner isn't present. Vehicle thefts have risen in each of the past five years with 16,743 vehicles reported stolen statewide last year. Total nightmare. <coughs> you've never had, uh, you've had your house messed with. Uh... Oh, no, didn't you say you had a car stolen when you were a kid? Uh, never stolen, but we had our car's broken into quite a bit. I've had my oh. car broken into twice in Egan, house broken into once. Oh, dude, that sucks. Car's broken into, I don't know. 
I once got up for work at a, a former radio station in the middle of the night. You know, we leave early. I parked on the street at the time. I walked out, and there's someone in my car currently uh, breaking in and robbing it. Dirty Mike? Dirty, Dirty Mike and the boys, yeah. <laughs> and I, I joined them, of course, you know, because they, they know how to have a good time. So. Yeah. What, what did you do? What did you do? Like, knock on the window? Or? I, I saw because he had the dome light on, so I saw it from, you know, 10, 15 feet away, and I hit the panic button, so the horn started going off. And the guy just got out and ran away. That's oh. smart. I, I don't think that would have crossed my mind. <laughs> no, I probably wouldn't have thought of that either. I would have just skipped straight to showing him the true meaning of dome light. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're going to do this. Mm -hmm. Put your seatbelt on. It's going to be bumpy. <laughs> oh. Do this thing right. <laughs> More than 1,100 people were arrested for driving while impaired during a two-and-a-half-week statewide enforcement campaign, which ran through Labor Day. The Minnesota Department of Public Safety said three of the rest involved people who were Keith Richards drunk with a blood alcohol content above four, uh, 0.40. Two others right around Lindsay Lohan drunk with a BAC <laughs> above three, uh, 0.37. One impaired driver had five prior DWI convictions in the past 10 years. Ooh, that's a lot. Another was arrested twice by the Winona County Sheriff's Office in just three days for DWI. Troopers stopped an impaired driver going 107 miles per hour with a .14 BAC and another arrested for going 99 with a .13. Overall, DPS said impaired driving arrests are up this year with at least 19,035 drivers arrested for DWI compared to 18,223 this time last year. It's about time you pull your head out of your ass. The department reminds Minnesotans that while marijuana possession was legalized last month, driving while high or having any open containers of marijuana products does remain illegal. A woman suspected of trying to sneak methamphetamine to an inmate in a San Diego jail via a drug-soaked piece of mail is now behind bars herself. Deputies staffing a jail mail processing facility noticed a letter intended for an inmate appeared to have been drenched in some type of liquid and dried. Running a chemical test on the piece of correspondence, they discovered it had been infused with liquid meth. Investigators ultimately determined 45-year-old Misty Van Teen had sent the drug spike letter. Mm -hmm. Liquid meth. Yeah, I didn't know there was such a thing. Chicks named Misty know all about it. Oh, man. <laughs> I've never met a Misty that doesn't know how to party. They were all trouble. They're wild. Every damn last one of them. Wild. The National Toy Hall of Fame announced the 12 finalists for their 2023 induction, including baseball cards, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Battleship, and the Ken doll. The National Toy Hall of Fame at the Strong National Museum of Play in Rochester, New York, announced the finalists that also include Bingo, Bop It, Cabot, Cabbage Patch Kids, Choose Your Own Adventure Books, Connect Four, The Little Tykes Cozy Coop, and Nerf Toys and Slime. The nomination of Ken comes in the wake of Ryan Gosling's portrayal of the doll in this year's blockbuster Barbie movie. Barbie was inducted into the National Ho uh, Toy Hall of Fame in 1998. The finalists are judged by criteria including icon status, longevity, disco uh, discovery, digestibility, and innovation. So it's really fun to sit as a group to go through the thousands of nominations that we receive every year and really pick what 12 we think best fit our criteria. So what 12 toys are iconic? What 12 toys have withstood the test of time and have had that longevity? Which toys have discovery and learning attached to them? And which one of them are innovative as well? The three that make it, uh, made it last year were Light Bright, Masters of the Universe, nice, and The Top. <laughs> Those chosen inductees will be revealed November 9th. He says it's fun to do that, like sort through the thousands, but I bet it's also really frustrating because yeah. you and the group have to agree on it. I mean, it's real work <laughs> sorting something like that out. I wonder if fights start. <laughs> well, I'd, I'll just say that if the turtles don't get in, they should just shut the place down. Hey, Josh, you remember my dachshund, the one that tried to kill your stepdaughter? Yeah, he, uh, he was burping up her face for weeks after trying to eat it. Yes, I one know of the, the One of the greatest joys in his long 19 years on planet Earth, one of his greatest joys was a round of that game, Bop It. Oh, I love that game. He loved to play Bop It. He could be, whenever I wanted to distract, like sometimes he would look out the window and bark at folks walking down the street. If I wanted him to stop, just fire up a game of Bop It. He just partied hard <laughs> with that. He loved it. it. There was something about the voice. He'd just be dancing around the room to the Bop It. He loved that. That uh, game's addicting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, was, it, was a, it had a good run. If you find yourself spending countless hours listening to or watching true crime documentaries and podcasts, then this job might be perfect for you. 
For the fourth year in a row, Magellan TV is launching its true crime dream job. The company's looking for one lucky true crime junkie who can handle the most menacing serial killer, the goriest details, and don't flinch at the chilling paranormal. The chosen winner will endure true crime nonstop for 24 hours. The payout is 2400 bucks. Since only one person will be selected, Magellan TV will provide 100 runners-up with free three-month memberships. Our ideal candidate lives for true crime. They can handle the most menacing serial killer, goriest details, don't flinch at chilling paranormal. They love it so much, they're willing to stream it nonstop for 24 hours. Along with watching, they'll be documenting their true crime all nighter on social media, so everyone will see if they can hack it or not, the job posting read. True crime lovers who want to apply have until tomorrow to do so. You can find a link to the application on 93x.com. I could do that, definitely. I thought of you initially. Yeah, Yeah, I love that kind of stuff. (laughs) And you're also young enough to stay up for 24 hours. Yeah, that'd be the hard part for me. Yeah, that's true. I just need like one cup of coffee. I should be good. Yeah, I'd be out. when they that, That right there, I'd be out. Former Minnesota twin Delman Young, 38 today. Delman Young? 38. I haven't heard that name out loud in a long time. Boy, he, for, for uh, I don't know, two or three weeks, he was the best hitter in baseball. <laughs> remember, remember when he was just on an effing tear? Yeah, absolutely. In, in the opening year of Target Field? Didn't we have a song for yeah, him? We yeah, we had a song. You, you don't have it, do you? Uh, I doubt it, because I think it's... Uh... Uh, I don't no, think we can no, do you're anymore. thinking of you're thinking of Denard Span. Well, I know we had let's get yeah we had that for one. Delman Young. We had everybody, everybody Del Young tonight. Yeah, <laughs> everybody Del Young tonight. I, I think we had to get rid of it. Every. He ended up having a pretty me- me- mediocre run with the Twins, but his bar run during his time here in Minnesota was prolific. Oh, really? Oh, I, yeah. Was he a party? Oh, big time. <laughs> I did not know that. Former Timberwolf, currently with the Miami Heat, Jimmy Butler, a.k.a. General Soreness, 34. Andrew Lincoln, Rick Grimes and the Walking Dead, 50 today. Sam Neill, Dr. Alan Grant in the Jurassic Park movies, 76. Natural Light Jesus says happy belated birthday to his Shelby Belby baby butts. (laughs) And he goes on to say, blame it on yourself for missing it. He said to Shelby Belby baby butts. Happy 50th to Susatron Super New she- uh, Nurse Jesus from Irish American Motorcycle Jesus Jesus. And that's 93X News. Care 11's Randy Shaver on the Half Assed Morning Show. Just being on the same page because we know these guys are going to come. Uh, a lot. I mean, there's. <laughs> that was. That was <laughs> but. Um, I mean, we have to be on key with our hots. We got to be on key with our protection. So, <laughs> damn it, uh, I was not expecting that. But yeah, we'll, we'll be. <laughs> yeah, that kid knows he's screwed. I a Weijin. He was thinking viral video. Here we go. We yeah. all know what that's like. Well, especially you. I a Weijin quarterback Cade McNamara at a press conference the other day talking about the Iowegians next game against Western Michigan. He's trying to express his thoughts on how his teammates need to communicate with their pass protections better because the word is, Randy Shaver, Western Michigan, they try to put pressure on the quarterback. Sure. They'll try. Good luck with that. (laughs) So as he said it, Western Michigan's nickname is the Broncos. Poor bastard, he said, the Broncos are going to come a lot. (laughs) (laughs) That's tough. Man. I think the pause in there was maybe when he realized, oh, geez, how do I get out of this? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Oh, I bet they decorated his locker with something. Oh, you're not kidding. <laughs> mm. The Iowegians, it says here, I thought they were supposed to suck again this year. No, they're they're a good football team. They just can't score points. That's their problem. They're ranked 25 in the nation. They beat Utah State. They beat Iowegian State. Right. Remember last year, though, they struggled to score points. They yes. They would beat teams seven to three or ten to nothing. Yeah, yeah. Whatever. They couldn't put so. any points on the board. I guess this McNamara kid with his dirty uh, talk, he's uh, <laughs> he's inspired the club. All right, Randy Shaver, we got to get going. We got things to do. Okay, sure. I saw it. Well, first, would you I... like me to talk faster? No, no. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I, I'm the one who's got to speed things up. I did see you on television last night and got a haircut, huh? I did get a haircut. Thank you for noticing. Yeah, yeah, you're welcome. 
Sure. Anybody else want to say anything about Randy's new hairdo? I think he looks as dapper as ever. <laughs> oh, <laughs> looks thank great. You, Josh. I notice little things like that. I know you do. On my guy friends. Yeah, I was gonna say, <laughs> hey man, do you notice anything different? What what did you do? I got my hair highlighted like a week ago, and no one said anything. Uh, and it's like way blonder than usual. Oh, I thought it had gone gray. Oh. oh my I thought God. maybe it had gone gray. Gray is cool Not, now. It's the, you know what it is. Damn right it is. Cool. Ashley, yeah. I I apologize. I feel like a jerk. The all the acne lately has distracted us. <laughs> oh my God. Oh my. What is yeah. with the way you're breaking out with the acne? <laughs> yeah. You're I'm, so lucky you didn't say this last week because I was breaking out oh, and I would have freaked out. I noticed your hair last week. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Randy's got a fresh new haircut. Well, yeah, if it makes you feel better, Ashley, nobody noticed you were breaking out yesterday or last week either. That does make me feel better, yeah. <laughs> the Vikings play tonight, Randy Shaver, so we got to pick them. They do. Em. We got to yes. pick them, and we got to include the color purple in a showing of solidarity with the home club. Okay. Before we go any further. If sure. you, uh, uh, listeners, the, the wonderful brother and sisterhood, if you want a shot to guess the halftime and the final, final score of next week's game, we already got someone lined up for this week, you got to listen at 9 and 3 for your keyword to text in. If you're picked and you get either prediction right, you win 1000 bucks. If you nail both of them, you take home 100 grand in a trip to the championship woo game in February. And this is sponsored by the Next Generation 10G Network only from Xfinity. Our I'm purple... To think, have we ever given money away in this thing? Uh, we did the first year. Did it was we? a thousand bucks. Yeah, we gave away a thousand oh. bucks. I want to say like two or three times. Oh, really? Yeah. Wow. And we we were like, boy, we wish we could get that full, both of the scores right, and just bankrupt them. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> bankrupt the company. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> it, it's not our fault that our listeners obviously know nothing about sports. <laughs> <laughs> our purple picker today is Mark Von Bank. What's going on, Mark? Hey, not much. What's up with you guys? Man, it's, what is it today? Thursday. We got a program going. Randy got a new haircut. Did you notice yeah. Randy's new haircut? <laughs> uh, I did not. Sorry, Randy. Ashley's <laughs> highlights. Did you notice Ashley's those? Ashley's highlights? Uh, she's not on television. Oh, yeah. Good point. Oh, <laughs> but did you hear about the acne? <laughs> it was kind of gross. Heard about that. Yeah. <laughs> Well, she's on the internet, but we can tell that story some other time. <laughs> oh my gosh, you got so you, many people looking up on their website now. Did you come out to the fair and buy anything? I did not. I haven't been to the fair in like 10 years. I'm just kind of over that. been going there since I was 6, and I'm 56 now. It's just a lot of work. Are you going to join us at Turtle Lake next month? I will be back there for nice. sure. What are you talking about? I remember you yeah. going last time. You went last time, what? didn't you? Yep. Oh, yeah. How do yeah. you know that Mark Von Bank was at Turtle Lake last fall? Well, we met. We all met him. Oh. Uh, yeah. Apparently, uh, he was more <laughs> memorable. <laughs> to yes. on your website. To I, don't, I don't remember Mark Von Bank. Well, you got Bank right in your name. You should be the guy that uh, rakes in all this cash. Right, Mark? That would be awesome. So here's what we need for you, or from you is how a grown person would say it. Your prediction for the halftime score for tonight's game. Minnesota 6. Philadelphia 17. Oh, woof. That's going to be a shellacking. Yeah, that, that doesn't feel good, but I understand. But they're the <laughs> comeback kids. Yeah, sorry, Vikings fans. I just got to go with what I think. You mean home right. team fans? Yeah. Um, uh, oh, yeah. I, I, I kind of like the sound of that. What I mean by that sounds like I got a good feeling about Mark is what I'm saying. Okay, the final, final. Let's go Minnesota 13, Philadelphia 27. Oh, wow. Yep. Mark so has that's been... the under, and it's more than the spread, but it just looks good. It's kind of a Thursday night deal, and they kind of do this stuff, a couple field goals and a late garbage touchdown. I, I don't know. I, I, right. I, 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 I love this guy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Doing research. I see yeah. where you're going with this, Mark, yeah. but I got, I, I'm sorry I to tell you this. For a couple minutes, you started to sound like Brad Ryder. <laughs> <laughs> Mark, Wait, my was... phone's breaking up. My <laughs> phone's breaking up. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I got that first. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm so, I, uh, it's been wonderful talking to you, Mark, catching up. Apparently, we've met, uh, and uh, apparently I'll see you in a month, but... Uh, we yeah, appreciate you probably would have met me as M Magic Playing Machinist Jesus. Okay, Magic Playing Machinist 
Jesus. If you win the hundred grand, could I borrow some in a month? <laughs> Buying a food truck, are you? Uh-huh. <laughs> now, if you had that kind of money, Wapple, you'd be dead. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> or just swimming in weed. Yeah. <laughs> Giant weed pool. Yeah, you'd need that much for how much you pay for it. <laughs> If you get either of those scores right, Mark Von Bank, you'll win a thousand bucks. You get them both. Hundred grand. Trip to the big game in February again. Thanks to the folks at the Next Generation 10G Network, only from Xfinity. Good luck, Mark. We'll talk to you soon. Hey, thanks, guys. You bet. And see you soon. And okay. We'll see Bye. him in Wisconsin, apparently. Quality manager go. Jesus Nick. He wants to know. He says, when the Vikings get absolutely pumped tonight. When are you going to order a Jalen Hurts jersey and wear it proudly around town so he can know what it's like to represent a winner? Wow, I'm buying two jerseys now? <laughs> yeah, you're going to go broke by the end Did of the year. Did you actually buy the other one? Not yet. i gotta, I got to oh. get someone to do it for me. I don't know how to order things on the Internet. So I, it, okay. it will be ordered. You, will you guys tell me how much of a panic I should be in? I'm going to order it on Friday. What day is it today? Today's Thursday. Thursday. I'm going to order it tomorrow. Uh, it depends can... where you get it. Yeah. yeah. We'll have to talk after the show. Okay. I mean, I'm, I'm again. I'm totally fine you know wearing. What, uh, Nick, give, what? The, give the young kids a ten dollars each and let them do the work for you. Who these young that, people? That's, that, that's what old people do. They <laughs> have the young people do the work. They give them a ten dollars spot. Well, no, that's fine because I don't know. I don't know how to do this. So <laughs> actually, it used to be a quarterback in the day. Be quiet. <laughs> yeah, I used to get a dollar for going to get having to go get a yeah. water bottle or a coke. Go get a beer from the fridge. Well, let me order. ask. Let me ask the young people. Do you like my chances of getting that Baker Mayfield jersey in time for next Friday if we ordered it this morning? Oh. Um, it would give me more hope if. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah. I'd say order it today versus tomorrow. Yeah, so so yes. I, I effed up. Go I waited too Amazon long. And, and yeah. Well, we can pay for some expedited shipping. Well, you know when you get a wrestling T-shirt, how long sometimes oh, those no. take? Yeah. I waited forever for that sexy T-shirt with Kenny Omega and Don Callis yeah. with their clothes off. That's kind of what I'm worried about right there. <laughs> well, I'm doing my best. Uh, I'm sorry if I disappoint you next Friday by not having the Baker Mayfield jersey. I don't know how to do these things. Well, well, can you... you... Wa- Walk into a store, like a store, and get it. Not the orange so. one. I yeah. bet they won't oh, have the, not that one. Maybe not a Baker Mayfield. That's either. The, I don't think he's the most popular. Well, he's popular in Tampa Bay right now. On the bright side, Nick, if you don't get it in time for the booze cruise, you'll have it in time for our uh, Brotherhood Bash up north. Right. So, or we could just take a white Hanes T-shirt, right Mayfield on the back, <laughs> <laughs> Tampa Bay on the front with the number six. Oh, I yeah. think you should do that. Yeah, let's tie dye it orange and. <laughs> Orange and white. Make, yes. a, make a tie-dye dream Just closer. make a, a homemade. <laughs> we'll finger it out somehow. Cut the sleeves off that thing oh, for sure. Oh, oh definitely. That's a bad boy, then. We'll finger it out somehow. I got no problem repping Baker Mayfield, whoever he is. So the Vikes play tonight in Philadelphia, 715 on some channel. What, what did you call it earlier? I, I Amazon Prime, Prime and Fox here streaming. locally. Oh, it's going to oh, be on regular. Fo- Fox is carrying it? Yep. Oh, good. Okay. Do you think they're going to get pumped, Randy? Um, I think it's going to be a closer game than most people think, but I, I just think the Eagles will will end up winning this game. Yes. I All think right. I looked at, uh, I think Ben Gosling uh, wrote about it in the Star Trib this morning. He predicted 24-13. That probably feels about right. Oh, I like the words of uh, Mark Von Bank as well. If we're talking about great predictors in town, let's not forget Mark Von Bank. Yeah, I... I I think he's in the same general area uh, of what most people likely think. The Vikings will be down at least one member of their starting offensive line, Garrett Bradbury, the center. He won't play. Yeah, and I think there's a couple going other guys are hurt. Problems up front. Problems up front. For sure, because the Captain Eagles Death Rock will be running line. for his life. <laughs> run, 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 run. <laughs> Probably running for his friggin' life. Hey, speaking of Baker Mayfield who is U.S. Bank Stadium's winningest quarterback so far in the 2023 season. He says he knew all the Vikings' defensive signals while he was whooping their ass last Sunday. Yeah. I wonder how Kevin O'Connor feels about being outsmarted by Baker Mayfield. (laughs) I saw that. (laughs) That's pretty embarrassing. (laughs) Yeah, that can't feel good. Yeah. (laughs) 
One of his teammates was on a podcast and uh, and mentioned that Mayfield rushed into the locker room at halftime and said, I've figured out all their signals. We yeah. was paying attention to the whole game of their signal calls, and I just remember, like, Bate came in the locker room, like, literally at halftime. He said, I got it. Like, we got all these signals. Like, we in there talking, like, as an office. Like, he's like, I know all these signals. If they do this, they going into cover two. They do this, they going into cover three. Every time I alert this, they drop him, and they do this signal, they drop him back to this. And I'm like, wow, like, you know, that's amazing. Is that why he... <laughs> He wasn't doing so hot at, you know, completing passes. He was too busy watching watching for our signals. No, actually, that would be a good thing because then he would know what they're doing defensively and should be much better at completing passes. Right. Mm-hmm. That's true. That's why he I came mean, out. I think that might be a reason why he came out and had a better second half. Exactly. By halftime, by half time, he said, hey, I figured, yeah. well, Jesus balls. I mean, that wouldn't have happened to Bud. That hurts a little. That wouldn't have Bud wouldn't have been outsmarted by. Uh, let me give me a, what's a what's a half uh, talented quarterback from Bud's era. Uh, well, let's go to the Roman to- Gabriel. Yeah, Bud wouldn't have been outsmarted. <laughs> Do they change their their signs like that every game? John Brody. Yeah, Bud wouldn't have been outsmarted by Gary Danielson. Yes. Um, do they change their signals every game? I have no idea. They sh- oh, certainly I, oh, will they now. Sure, they I do. They I would do. Yeah. So. yeah, they do. Because okay. then they're on film and other teams can watch them. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. Yep. But, I mean, there are people that are paid in your building to pretend that you are that opponent. And, you know, you're always testing yourself as to whether they can figure out what you're doing, you know, relative to what you're lineup is your you know whatever your scheme is Mm. so they're always going back and forth internally trying to make sure that people can't figure out what you're doing so obviously it didn't work this time according to baker mayfield bud sure as hell wouldn't have been outsmarted by terry bradshaw i don't know if bud was ever outsmarted no (laughs) i love it's also it's also why bud loved veteran players and was not very high on having a lot of rookies and first, second year guys, Bud was a very much was very much a veteran football coach. He wanted veteran players because they made fewer mistakes. Can just we keep going simple. with this game? Just because I love naming quarterbacks from the seventies. <laughs> sure. Bud never would have been outsmarted by Craig Morton of uh, Dallas Cowboys. He never would have been outsmarted by Burt Jones, uh, Indianapolis Colts. Greasy, maybe. Yeah, Greasy. Miami was smart because Shula was their coach. You never bet against Don Shula at home. No. I love I love college football play calling. When you get to look on the sidelines and they have all the, oh, yeah. the images, like you'll have like right. Cookie Monster, the Queen of England, a cowboy hat, and a right. fart. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> so true. <laughs> For Pete's sake, here's a guy who can't let it go. Former Viking, now retired running back uh, Adrian Peterson has joined the cast of Dancing with the Stars. That what? show is still going. Yeah, sure I is. guess. Didn't he do something like that before? I thought he did. Yeah, I thought he was on maybe there even Dancing reading. with the Stars. Oh, I really. I or, don't. Or are you thinking of Emmett Smith, who actually I think won it, didn't he? Yeah. No way, really. I think Emmett Smith. Emmett was... Smith did well. I know Jerry Rice did well too. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I don't remember if Adrian Peterson's ever been on. The, I don't follow him. But he's teaming up with a professional dancer called Britt Stewart. Okay. What show was that, Josh? Hello, Britt. <laughs> Flight of the Concord. <laughs> Flight of the Concord. I like roll your call. That show. The roll right call is the best. There's three Brit. of them. All right, let's do some roll call. <laughs> Here, present. <laughs> Boy, those guys were funny. I want to rewatch that, though. Adrian oh. Peterson, what a clown. The rest of the cast might grab you. I, I like some of these people. See what you think now. I'm going to throw uh, a few of them at you, the ones I think you might recognize. The rest of the cast of the upcoming Dancing uh, in the uh, Stars. Uh, it starts later this month. A uh, supermodel named Tyson Beckford. That rings a bell. He's a good-looking dude. Uh, I have no idea how to say this, but I wanted to throw it your way because I know you guys watch Marvel movies and whatnot. Marvel star... Shochitl Gomez? No. Fair enough. Allison Hannigan from television and film fame. Oh, she's American wonderful, Pie. yeah. Mm-hmm. I always thought she was oddly sexy. Mm-hmm. Oh, it was Was it the flute line? Is that what got you? <laughs> well, no, I mean, not just that line, just her. I just thought she was very sexy looking and uh, kind of nerdy sexy. Uh, I have a thing for Allison. By God, mean Jean. 
Hannigan. Anyone watch a show called Vanderpump Rules? No. 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 I'm familiar with Forget it. about it. Grammy winning singer Jason Mraz. Jason yes. Mraz. Okay. Mr. I, a to Z. Don't know him. Ooh, Randy Shaver. Here's something I bet is more your speed. What's up? Academy Award winning actress Mira Sorvino. Oh, sure. Now we're talking. The Wrestler. I like that movie quite a bit. She's gorgeous. In She's the, a stunner. Mm-hmm. Is this Britney Spears' uh, sister, Jamie yep. Lynn Spears? It is, yes. They call her an actress? Yeah, she was on... Um, 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 Vanderpump Rules? No. <laughs> um, shoot. It's like 90210. I am completely blanking. And she ruined it. She ruined it she got pregnant. Remember, I was so mad. I didn't know that Britney Spears' sister uh, was involved in uh, professional acting. Does anyone know a comedian named Matt Walsh? Yeah, I wasn't familiar with Matt Walsh. Forget him. Here's the main <laughs> event. This is going to maybe cause me to turn on this program once or twice, Dancing with the Stars. Former Brady Bunch actor Bra- Barry Williams. I love Barry Williams or anything connected to the Brady Bunch. I'm a big fan. Barry Williams, Randy. Sure. Yes. Jamie Lynn Spears was in Zoe 101, That's by the way. Audience. Never yeah. heard of it. Gosh, that was bothering me. The show itself is co-hosted by Alfonso Ribeiro and Julianne Huff. Mm-hmm. I know who Alfonso is. He's funny. He's awesome. Okay, isn't this how it always works? This stuff aggravates me. So Karen Rogers, his Achilles gives way on him. Season over. Completely aborts the 2023 season for the Jets. Now there's talk going around that um, there's a call going out for all stadiums to move to natural grass surfaces. It won't happen. Yep, it won't happen. Isn't that how it always happens? A star player goes down. Oh, we got to tweak the rules. We got to change everything. The average player's legs come off business as usual. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) So this article I was uh, uh, cruising through, they discuss as to whether or not that would work at the new Metrodome, and experts are saying no. Not unless you replace that natural grass about every week or so. (laughs) It would die so fast. The grounds crew would have such a hard time. Well, I mean, it's 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 probably on average is far more expensive to have natural grass. And I I understand why players would rather play on it. I get Mm -hmm. it. I think we all understand that, but. Just the economics of it, the, the cost of it. Could you imagine um, the water bill? Over the course of the year. Would be well, the bill that I saw connected to having real grass inside a, a domed stadium, like the new Metrodome, the uh, the big dollars they were talking about, well, maybe this isn't so big. I don't, I don't know anything about this kind of stuff, but they talk about how they'd have to have grow lights yes. for you potheads. You're chuckling right now. <laughs> and and other gimmicks that would cost around 4 to $5 million a year Whoa. to maintain. Right. Well, and then, I mean, all these concerts that come to town, all these big shows with these huge right. stages and absolutely destroy the grass. Oh, yeah, those would get ripped up instantly. So well, but losing. don't they know how to put... Well, they put stuff down on them, don't but, they, they, but, but you're right. They it, know how to put... I mean, they target, do that at tar- Target Field. Yeah, and, and it, yeah. They, they've had a couple of moments where a little bit of this and that got eaten up, like a little spot in left yeah. field got kind of torn. But I think they know how to cover that stuff up well enough these days to where that wouldn't be a massive concern. It's a little bit different, though, playing baseball as opposed to football on the grass turf, though, too. Mm-hmm. You're going to tear up the field, obviously, much more playing football than you would baseball. I know what Josh is thinking. Josh is thinking, well, what are they going to do about the monster truck show? (laughs) Yeah, no kidding. Would they never be able to have a monster truck show again? Uh... All right, so Peyton Manning is starting to find a guy or two to be on his quarterback show. Oh. Season one was popular. Who, uh, Who volunteered? It sounds like Manning has suckered Rams quarterback Matt Stafford into signing up for season part deux. Is he even coming back next year? <laughs> well, is it, I mean, what does you that matter? About, are you talking about like right now he's doing it? Yeah, he's, what do you call oh, it? Oh, okay. He's wearing a mic. Season. Yeah, he's, he's wearing a mic right, right now. now. Okay. Yeah. Okay. They spotted him on the uh, field already wearing a mic. Okay. Matthew Stafford. A lot of folks have said no. A lot of quarterbacks have said no. 
Tua would kind of be interesting. Watch yeah. him do all this his jujitsu and all that stuff. Yeah. I think he's on the list of people that said no. Tua from the Dolphins? Mm -hmm. He does jujitsu? Yeah, that was the big story that he was like learning how to fall through jujitsu so he doesn't get hurt. That's cute and everything, but does he do death jitsu? (laughs) I don't think so. Like the... Damn it! What's the name of the little cl- <laughs> the, the little club that John Moxley's in on AEW? They're called the uh, the Irish uh, Death Gang or what? What are they called again? They do death jitsu. It's it's him and uh, Claudio Castronelio and uh, and Brian Danielson. They do oh, death. They're called the. We'll come up with it. Did everyone get a look at what some are calling the best pass in Cleveland Browns history? Oh my gosh! Yes. Is this up on our website? It is. Randy, you got to get a look at this. This was before Sunday's game between the Browns and the Bengals. Oh, speaking of AEW wrestling and the Browns and the Bengals game from Sunday, I'm watching Dynamite last night, and out comes Christian Cage, formerly of Edge and Christian, one mm-hmm. of the all-time greats. Christian Cage comes out. The show last night was live in Cincinnati, and Christian Cage comes out with a live mic, and he says, you know, last week on Dynamite, I was pretty embarrassed. Not, you know, losing to the Cleveland Browns level of embarrassed. <laughs> but I was pretty, and the crowd went, F you! Blackpool Combat Club. That's it. They do death <laughs> jitsu. Before Sunday's game between the Browns and Bengals in Godforsaken Cleveland, a guy named Andrew Butts. <laughs> what does that remind you of, Randy Shaver? Who was the butt? Marion Butts. Marion Butts. A guy named Andrew Butts, he set up his tailgate party with some friends right next to the Cuyahoga River. Right. You been there? I've been along there, yes. Sure. It's around a mile from the ballpark. Butts and his buddies are throwing back some Steve Weisers before the game. A freight boat was making its way down the waterway, heading for Lake Erie, they say. And someone at the tailgate party hollered to a dude on the freight boat and asked, Hey, you want a beer? According to Butts, the guy in the boat said, well, yeah, but you can't make that throw. But this Butts guy grabs a beer, gets a running start, and hurled the can at the worker, and he was able to snag the beer out of the air, and that's why they're calling it the most impressive pass in Cleveland Browns history. It was at least 100 feet. got a shot. We should recreate that on Friday, next Friday, yeah. oh, on our you boat. That oh, is you such should. an incredible throw. Yeah, that guy's got a hell of an arm. Oh, he does. Yeah. They say the throw was at least 100 feet, Skis. Yes. That's enough to keep me going for a long time. I don't like think a, I... a personal win that I, I think that that would be enough to keep me alive the rest of my life. What are we talking about? Like if I had a personal win like that, nothing oh, could a, hurt me. A personal win yep. like that. Okay. Oh, yeah. You would be, nothing could hurt you if you made a 100 foot uh, beer throw. Beer throw onto a huge barge like that? Oh, with everybody watching, and then they honked the horn thing? Oh. <laughs> it was pretty cool. <laughs> the boat worker who caught the beer posted a picture on stupid social media somewhere, and he asked how to get a hold of this butts guy so he could reward him somehow. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> that's sweet. I think he should throw a boat at him. <laughs> throw a boat at him? Yeah. You spent, you, you spent too much time doing death jitsu. <laughs> <laughs> Took a shot to the head, did he? Yeah. Hey, former NFL star wide receiver Chad Johnson, one of Cubby's favorite all-time players. Yes. Great player in his day. Interesting very, guy. Very philanthropic. Yeah. Mm-hmm. He treats his fans very well. Philanthropic. He's always got an interesting point of view. Is that what it means to be philanthropic? No, like giving. Generous. Share. Generous. Oh, oh. I was completely off on that. He thinks players in today's NFL are getting injured more because they're eating too many vegetables. Nutrition. (laughs) They ain't eating right. They putting all this green stuff in their body. They eating all this healthy stuff. That's not helping the body. That's not helping you be able to go out there and perform at a high level. I really wanted to talk to some of these individuals that continue to get hurt. Cooper Cup. Let me tell you what I did because I played 12, 13, yeah, 13 years. No injuries. Not one. 
Bad food their body, is not it. They're not putting their body through the ringer enough. I took every rep. First team. I ran down on special teams. I'm doing all this. You know there's a lot of luck in that. No, no, and what no, Brett no, Favre no, did. Don't do that. Don't do that. There's don't a lot of luck. That. It is. Listen, the high power athletes keep getting injured. Year in and year out, the numbers continue to increase. Tom Brady didn't get injured. What? Tom Brady didn't get injured. I he didn't? He didn't get hurt? He got hurt one time in, tw- okay. in 23 seasons. That guy does more yelling than I Shannon do. Yeah, Sharp. I don't Shannon like it. Sharp. Yeah, Calm down. Shannon Sharp? Yeah, he's with yeah. Stephen A. It's like a yell off. Yeah. Ugh. A lot of those shows kind of turn into that. Yeah, it all mm-hmm. is. is people screaming at each other. So they're, they're eating too many uh, vegetables, not helping the body. Wasn't, uh, didn't uh, Chad Johnson once say he would like clean out four or five damn McMuffins before a ball game? Yeah, what was that? I, he loves I just McDonald's. Saw he loves McDonald's, yeah. Yeah, yeah it, was a, it was definitely McDonald's. He might be onto something. Damn shame I was saying earlier what happened to those twins yesterday after making that nice comeback. Lost 5 4. Son of a bitch if, uh, what's his nuts there? Uh, what the hell's his Jax. name? Well, yeah, Jax gave uh, Randy or Rosarena. Yeah. Rosanna Dana. Yeah, Randy Rosanna Dana. He hit a dong in the top of nine with the game tied at four. Rays win 5 4, but Cleveland lost again. Yeah, I mean, again, like I said the other day, I, it's it's a foregone conclusion they're going to win the division. So mm-hmm. it's just a matter of just playing the string out, stay healthy, try to find some rhythm offensively, get these pitchers ready for what postseason might look like. And They start a series in Chicago now against the White Sox, 6.30 tonight on Valley Sports. Kenta Maeda going to throw against Jose Urania. Mm. And his ERA is not good. <laughs> so... I would like to. Kenta's or Urania. Urania. Hopefully, the the boys can. uh, The White Sox ERA in general is not good. No. 8.46 isn't good since when? (laughs) (laughs) Out of 10? (laughs) (laughs) That sounds pretty good. You'll get a kick out of this, Randy Shaver. So, yeah, Griffin Jacks gives up the dong in the ninth. Jax is the first Twins reliever with double-digit losses since Ron Davis. Oh, mm-hmm. is he really? Had 11 losses in 1984. F and R.D. Oh. <laughs> Billy Gardner. Billy Gardner. Oh, my God. He had to have a stiff drink. Oh. All right, when... I found Chad Johnson's game day meal. Or meals, I should say. This oh. is what he would eat. Breakfast, McDonald's hotcakes with sausage, a sausage McMuffin, and a large orange juice. Yum. Snack, strawberry frosted Pop-Tarts and six boiled eggs. <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> uh, for lunch, Bahama Breeze, curry chicken, pasta, extra chicken, no asparagus. I love that he added that. Yeah. <laughs> How should this man not have diarrhea every game? <laughs> uh, for dinner, three legs of fried chicken, candied yams, macaroni and cheese, sweet water cornbread, and a slice of chocolate cake. That was his Gosh. game day meal. Dang, or meals. dude. Good for him. Yeah. Yeah, how does he not have a stomach ache? Oh, I can't even hear that. He's like jacked. That. He is, yeah. He was always in really good shape. You know, Randy, while I was watching the Twins beat the Rays on Tuesday night, I never noticed that Yandy Diaz of the Rays left the game because of what they're calling here a testicular contusion. Oh. oh. In simpler get it, terms. Get it twisted? No. He fo- we just saw this recently, didn't we? Someone refresh my memory. In simpler terms, he fouled a ball. Oh, off of it. Smooth up into the air, off of his own nuts. Come out to take a look here. Not the foot. It's a bad hop. He was now, up he to the third base, right? I think First that's base, correct. Third base? Yeah, something he, like this why ha- happened. Why would you wear a cup? <laughs> <laughs> we don't know. We've had this conversation a I thousand times. He was up to the plate in the fifth inning. He chopped a ball straight down in the dirt. He chopped a pitch straight down in the dirt. It bounced back up, and it remodeled his testicles. Man, it's got to hurt. He played yesterday, but they said he was, I think this was even legitimately in the injury report or something. He played tender? yesterday, but they said that he had bruised testicles. Oh, oh. tender. Yeah. Poor guy. It was Lars Newt Bar. 
that yes. got oh, himself St. in the Louis. nuts. Yeah. Yes. You're so that right. was like a week ago, right? That was a Just mind. recently. Like a month ago. Wasn't that Anybody long. Oh, wow. named Lars Newt Bar deserves yeah. whatever they get. <laughs> <laughs> and it looks like El Tuve got himself in the beginning of the year, too. Oh, that makes me Good happy. Good for him. Did anyone see the picture of rookie dress-up day yesterday I for the did. Twins? Yeah, they look great. Like, guys look sharp. Yeah. Now, I, I can't love. recognize everybody in the picture, but here's what I can tell you for sure. Yeah. Ah, well, maybe I'm not 100% sure. Stevenson, the big rookie, I believe he is a, a Reno 911 guy. Yes, yep. it's yep. awesome. His shorts need to be a little shorter, <laughs> but otherwise he nailed it. Yep. Yeah. Matt Walner is a Christmas elf of some sort. Yeah, I think it's Elf from uh, Will Ferrell. Oh, I believe that's what he's going. For. Royce, Royce Lewis is Doctor Evil. I believe it's Josh Winder as um, Austin Powers. My favorite by far is Edward Julian as a Canadian Mountie. Yeah, Mountie. yeah. he's yes. got the pose down and everything. <laughs> <laughs> that is perfect. Who was Mini Me? I have no idea. Yeah, because there's a Doctor Evil and a Mini Me. I, I think some of those guys might be just folks running with them. Yeah, because the dude some who's su- support staff for the twins. Yeah, something. support staff. Because the dude, I, I didn't even re- recognize there was a Mini Me there until you mentioned it. That dude, that he's not a pro ball player. <laughs> he's pretty small. Maybe yeah. he's a bat boy. The Atlanta Braves clinched the NL East. Are they the first team to clinch their division, Randy? I believe they are. They've won it six years in a row. Boy, the Texas Rangers season has become a damn nightmare. Well, they won big yesterday. Max Scherzer is out for the rest of the regular season. I know he is. And likely won't pitch in the postseason if the Rangers make it. Yeah. I mean, compare the season they've had since the All-Star break. Good Lord. Right. It's been brutal. But they do. They have a plethora of guys. I mean, they've traded for some guys. Jordan Montgomery had a great outing last night. Um, I think they're going to be okay. Their offense is pretty good. Um, They normally can outscore teams like they did last night against Toronto. Um, So, yeah, but it's tough to lose a guy like Max Scherzer, especially postseason Max Scherzer, who, you know, you, you feel like can take you into the seventh inning every time he goes out there. So. A listener sent in what they claim is the dialogue between Dick Bramer and Justin Morneau when that Diaz guy got hit in the penis and testicles. So they were watching the game the other night. Bramer asked Morneau, how many hitters do you think wear cups? Mm. Okay. Interesting. And remember, they're watching Diaz laid out on the turf, hanging onto his unit like he's a little baby, right? Mm-hmm. And Morneau says, I can think of one who's probably not. <laughs> 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 and then Morneau apparently said, as an infielder, my hands weren't good enough to go out there without a cup. Yeah. I would think just the speed of the play and the, the bat speed the ball coming off the bat. I, I just don't know how you wouldn't do that to protect you gotta yourself. Be, you got to be out of your mind. Yeah. Josh, did you know this? This text I just got from What It Do Jesus. Uh, I mentioned this Diaz dude had bruised testicles. What It Do Jesus, he says, you have to treat bruised testicles like snake bites. I've been telling people oh, that for years. stop it. <laughs> did you know that, Randy? I did not. You got to get the, the venom out, the, bru- the bruise out? <laughs> oh, my. That calls for... Very good friend. Somebody special. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe even a professional. <laughs> sure. It's all business. That's right. Uh-huh. There's no emotion involved. All right, speaking of male genitals, personally, I don't care much at all about pro athletes taking this or that to enhance their performance. I've never been one of those guys that jumped on the yeah. You know, throw these guys out forever, and there's got to be an asterisk next to the. You know, it's never been my thing. It's overrated what these pills and such do for a player anyway, in my opinion. But it is interesting to read. Uh, I'm not ever going to get involved in this, but there's some latest report on how every baseball player ever had some kind of dope running through their veins while they were playing ball. Our guy Alex Rodriguez, who one day will be running the Timberwolves in some fashion, he said back in his playing days, he took Cialis. How do you say it? 
Cialis? Cialis. Yep. He took Cialis and Viagra, quote, for fun. <laughs> now, I've never tried either, although I likely will someday. How is it fun? I mean, just having a boner is fun for A-Rod? What does he mean by that? I, I couldn't even tell you. When's the last time you had a boner, Josh, and you said, ha, this is fun? <laughs> 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 More recent than you may want to know. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I say that every three months. <laughs> Uh-oh, boner time. <laughs> This new report I'm on... I'm sure you hear that cheer in my neighborhood quite a bit. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone in the neighborhood knows when you get a boner? At the old folks. I'm, I'm saying uh, gentlemen in general in my neighborhood. Oh, sure. All the old timers. This new report on how uh, juiced up baseball players were at one point or another talks about things like testosterone creams. Yeah. Oh, I just learned about that the other day. Testosterone creams. I did. Uh, there I were... got prescribed something like that did you but for isn't that, it, oh, isn't, oh, yeah. isn't that uh isn't that though a lot of this drug stuff was for recovery right it's not really to maybe i'm maybe i'm thinking of, the, of a different thing but a lot of this was to help yes. athletes recover as opposed to building muscle or being that's what people know, misunderstood about yeah. it in my yeah. opinion Right. There were a lot of people who thought Josh could go into the bathroom, shoot himself in the can with steroids, and <laughs> he's going to come out. Bigger. He's yeah. going to come out and go four for four with three home runs right. and eleven RBIs. Right. That's right. what I always thought. No, that's not, not the case. Not it, it it's not no. like Popeye drinking his spinach or whatever he did <laughs> right. back in the day. Right. It, it, the number one bonus, from what I understand, of a lot of these drugs back in the eighties and still right. today, is it just keeps you on the field. Injuries don't bother you as much. Right. Oh. Mm-hmm. Okay. It helps you recover faster. I just learned about testosterone creams, though, the other day. It was really interesting. You spread all this. This was the interesting part to me. You spread all this. It's like a... Well, it's a cream. And it, it seeps into your skin. I, I heard that it makes you smell like a dog's ass. It oh. just smells terrible. And then, like, say, if Josh and I were to bump... While I'm covered in this testosterone cream, it, it would then seep into <laughs> your body. <laughs> I, I could pass it on to you. We're, we're, Isn't that weird? Yeah, the stuff they gave me, it's barely any in it. But they still don't say you can't use it very long. The most interesting part was I was told it just smells like the, the end of time. When yeah, you maybe that's it. a different kind. Uh. Speaking of smells, a skunk delayed a game at a minor league stadium for the second time this season. <laughs> That's fun. Is it the same skunk? I don't know. Could it be. The Harrisburg Senators have a skunk problem at their ballpark. This is twice now in a month that a skunk is running, and then the, the ground screws got to chase them out of there, and then it ended up in the uh, away club's bullpen, so hopefully nobody got <sighs> nobody got asked. Yeah. That's his home. Imagine getting back on the bus, on the minor league bus, after the whole bullpen got skunked. Oh. Yeah, they probably wouldn't let you on. I've never, never experienced uh, getting sprayed or been around anybody who's been sprayed. No, me either. Outside of roadkill, that's the only time I've ever smelled it. Well, I well, would we... like to know if it actually does smell like weed. Weed? Because every time somebody smells, they're like, oh, I smell skunk. When they no. smell weed. So it smells know. nothing it smells like way weed. Worse. Way worse. Way Absolutely worse. nothing. Uh, when we were kids, a buddy of mine's dog got asked by a skunk, and mm-hmm. it was mm-hmm. un-effing believable. Oh. Does it burn? Well, the dog, see, he didn't seem to be bothered at all. Hmm. He had that same dopey look on his face that he did 20 minutes prior. He was having a good time with it, I <laughs> he think. He probably likes the smell. Well, yeah. you know how dogs like to soak up the smell of every damn okay. thing. They love yeah. things that stink, for he, sure. This was 50, well, 45 years ago. I, he didn't seem to be bothered at all. He just came running at us, and we could tell from quite a ways away that he got asked. <laughs> Sam was his name. He was cute. Remember the cute story from a couple weeks ago, uh, dude wipes? Mm -hmm. (laughs) Mm -hmm. The folks who make baby wipes for grown asses, they uh, they upped and decided, we covered this a couple weeks ago, they've come out with a fall version of their ass wipes called Dumpkin Spice. Did I say that right? That's right. (laughs) Dumpkin Spice. (laughs) Well, now they've gone ahead and teamed up with a NASCAR driver to make a Dumpkin Spice Mobile for this weekend's race oh, no. in the JV League. 
It's not what you think, Randy. It's a cool looking car, but okay. black and gold. It just says Dude Wipes on one side and Dumpkin Spice on the other. What are you? What, you thought they put big ass cheeks on the car or something? <laughs> <laughs> Some guy with trucker butt? Right. So uh, this weekend in the JV race, uh, look for uh, the number 78 Chevy Camaro driven by Anthony Alfredo. He'll be sporting a new Dumpkin Spice Wipes design. And here's how the story ends. This was written by Busted Coverage, so don't don't uh, come after me. Busted Coverage says, It could be a weekend where many drivers and teams will be thinking about dumping a pumpkin. <sighs> Keep the dude wipes nearby. <laughs> Buggy Wagon Jesus wants to know if there's a Blumpkin Spice. No, there's Aww. not a Blumpkin Aww. Spice. Aww, dude. Oh, uh, What's the matter with you? pun intended, but or I was going to say, dude, that doesn't work anymore. But this car is really sweet. It is cool looking. <laughs> this looks awesome. It's very uh, Halloween vibes. They're, they're doing good there. Oh, sweet. They're racing at Bristol, too. That'll be fun. I like the short tracks. Lots of crashes. You're on a short track. Lots of crashes? <laughs> yeah. yeah, Waffle? You're kind of like watching a crash. In a way. <laughs> short track to getting friggin' fired. That's not true. Huh? Sweet. <laughs> That's news. You're safe. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. That's news. No, no. <laughs> it's a short track, son. <laughs> and the, the finish line is near. <laughs> <laughs> very, very near. <laughs> All right, before we go, Josh, this Steph Curry impersonator who's like four foot nine. <laughs> Can I hire him for my New Year's Eve party this winter or something? Aside from the height, it's almost uncanny. Uh, if you put him on stilts, he's great. You ought to see this, Randy. It's on Shea. 93x.com. There's a Steph Curry impersonator who runs around the Philippines impersonating Steph Curry. Uh, someone Can he po- shoot like Steph? I, I didn't see him with a basketball. I didn't see him with a basketball yet. But when he puts on the uniform, like Josh said... He Clipping looks a lot right like now. someone put a video up there. He's walking through an airport. Everyone's following him with their cellular telephones, taking pictures, taking videos. Oh, he doesn't look like Steph Curry. What are you talking oh, about? He sure does. He's seriously like two feet shorter than him. No. Look at his oh, freaking face. More than two feet. No. You don't think he looks like mm. Steph Curry? He's got a good vert. No. He, he was he was mimicking the step back three, which is traveling, by the way. Someone should tell Curry and James Harden that it's traveling. Oh. Uh, and then he, uh, everyone loved him. All right, fine. Don't look it up on our website. I guess not, I don't think he looks like Steph it. Curry very much either, not but that's just because it. I think Steph Curry is so good looking that I. That nobody I else can I'd look able, like him? No, I think I'd be able to, like, notice because this man isn't as beautiful as Steph Curry. Do you think that uh, Patrice, what's his name again, the quarterback for the Chiefs? Patrick, Patrick Mahomes. Mahomes. Do you think that Patrick Mahomes is good looking? No. Oh, because that would make it difficult for you to watch Subway commercials if you found both of them attractive. <laughs> no, I'm uh, yeah, I'm just focused on stuff the whole time. What's Ashley doing? We're moving her clothes over here. Another Subway commercial. <laughs> it balances out. I love Subway sandwiches, but if Steph Curry and Patrice uh, Mahomes tell me about <laughs> it one more time, I think I might lose my mind. But, you know, they know how to make money. There you go, Randy <laughs> Shaver. You say Patrice for a guy, and they know who I think of? Patrice Bergeron. No. <laughs> um, Patrice and Zygmunt Zabo. Remember oh, Ernest and Ernest's Zygmunt Zabo? Ernest's brother, yes. Yes, yes. Ernest's brother. I remember Ernest Zygmunt Zabo. I don't yes. remember Patrice. Yeah, they, played, they both played at Mound West Tonka. But oh, I, yeah. I don't remember if Patrice, uh, if he did he play for the Go? I don't think he played for the Gophers. Ernest did. But Ernest did. Oh, yeah. Ernest could rebound. Ernest and Zigamazavo. Yeah, absolutely. I love when you bring out the old names. <laughs> Dig it. You know what? I just heard Patrice, and I go, ah, Patrice and Zigamazavo. We started this show with old names, or at least this break. Uh, we're going to end the segment with old names. Randy, tomorrow we'll uh, we'll have you all set up in a dad fight with Brad Ryder. We'll have tons of laughs, I promise. Oh, let's get that uh, noise going so that Brad's body. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Unfortunately, they fixed it. <laughs> Our engineer's a stud. Uh, this uh, is funny. Sounds good. Small pecker from Becker Jesus just texted in and said, Mahomes needs an adult haircut. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's about time. Yeah. Talk to you tomorrow, Randy. See ya. Uh, coming up next, uh, Jordan Max is going to join us in the studio, so uh, stick around. 
There's a douchiness to them. <laughs> the 93X Half-Assed Morning Show. Hey, Minnesota. CJ Ham here. Huddle up for a second. You need someone to go to extra yard when your furnace is out? Give the ball to the certified pros at Standard Heating and Air Conditioning. They've been at it for 90 years. Ready? Break. Regular furnace maintenance can be your wallet's best friend. Slashing energy bills and warding off those inconvenient breakdowns that seem to strike at the worst moments. Don't leave it to chance. Schedule your tune-up today at standardheating.com. You love Lala Kent on Vanderpump Rules. Now get to know her on Give Them Lala. I feel like I have friends in this camera. I know. I love that you're looking at the camera. No, you do have friends. No, I know. I feel like they're all here. Yes. (laughs) We're all just like hanging out. Ocean's very into thumbs up right now. She's like this in her face. Thumbs up. <laughs> we do it all the time. She loves that face. I love that. Give one to the your friends. Watch what Lala is talking about on YouTube or search for Give Them Lala wherever you listen. The 93X Half-Assed Morning Show. Oh, well, isn't this nice? Welcome back to the 93X Half-Assed Morning Show. A uh, woman we've all seen naked is in studio right now, and uh, some of you are maybe saying, Jesus, what's Josh's wife doing in studio? <laughs> <laughs> No, it's not Cubby's wife. It's adult film actress Jordan Max. Welcome back, Jordan. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. For the record, I haven't yet seen you naked. Uh, I think I'm <laughs> the only. Okay. I'm I the think only you're one the in the building. One. Yeah. Yeah. Probably in the whole building that hasn't seen you <laughs> in naked. In the building, he yeah. says. <laughs> that's a. That's probably a good guess. Yeah. Could be. What's been keeping you busy lately, Jordan? Um. Not much, really. I just got back. I was in St. Louis for three days. Ah, the porn capital of America. Yes, just <laughs> hanging out with some friends. I went to um, a rock show. It was a great time. Um, You're always at a rock show or at an AEW show or at a WWE show or making porno movies. Facts. You know, God forbid a woman has hobbies. <laughs> <laughs> Did you say the rock show you went to? Um, I went to go see a band called Bayside. Bayside. Yeah. That was the school where uh, Zach and uh, Screech yeah, went. Bayside yeah. High. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Did they have a Zach and Screech theme to their overall uh, onstage persona? No, they don't. But they are hockey fans. So oh. when they come and play Minnesota, they like to call themselves Coach Gordon Bomb Bayside. <laughs> <laughs> okay, That's I'm, clever. I'm instantly a fan of this band. <laughs> I didn't think I'd be aggravated during this segment, but now suddenly I am. Sorry. You're off watching rock shows and things like that. Okay. Yeah, I'm going back to film in October. I'll be in L.A. for two weeks. Do you know exactly what you're up against? I do not know yet. It's okay. still a little too soon to tell. Sure. Is it going to have a Halloween vibe? Oh. I hope so. That'd oh, yeah. Cool. Have you, I would love that. Have you done that? Made a Halloween-themed uh, porno at all? Yeah, on my OnlyFans, but nothing for the mainstream companies yet. So you'd be comfortable taking on any of the infamous, uh, you know, movie characters, horror movie characters, like a guy goes uh, after you dressed as Freddy Krueger or Jason or who am I missing? Uh, Mike Myers. Uh, oh, that would be so Ghost cool. Face. Ghost face from Scream. Yeah. Ghost face. That's a that's, that's a hot thing. one. I see like um, pictures of couples um, like from OnlyFans and stuff, and they have the, the ghost mask. face mask yeah. on. Yeah, that stuff is hot. Yeah. Can you give us your top three? Uh, that you'd like to make a movie with? Like, who would, from uh, three to one, some of these serial killer characters that (laughs) might turn you on a little bit? Oh, man. I mean... Is uh, Leprechaun on the list? (laughs) (laughs) No. Actually, no. Uh, Yikes. Leprechaun. How about Jack Nicholson's character from The Shining? Uh, They found an actor that looked just like him. He's a... That's a classic, but... You know, I I got to say I re- I number w- I know you wanted to go from 3 to 1, but the only thing coming to mind is Ghostface from the Scream franchise. That, that's your number 1? That's my number 1. I love that franchise. It's so good. Mhm. Mm-hmm. What about Officer Doofy? I Do- love, Doofy? I love Officer Dewey. Dewey. Oh, oh, from Scream. Yeah. From Scream. Yeah. I met him. He was here for wrestling. He wrestled here. Yeah, David Arquette. Yeah. Cool. It was great. So a Halloween theme wouldn't put you off uh, in any way, shape, or form? Not even a little bit. Halloween is my favorite holiday. I started decorating my apartment for Halloween the day after 4th of July. I love that. <laughs> that that yeah. makes me yeah. so happy. I love Halloween, too. Are you friggin' kidding me? My damn. Did you know Ashley's birthday is on Halloween? Is it? Yeah, 
Yeah. Oh my God, you're so lucky. <laughs> Heck yeah, it's awesome. Okay, where are we now? Uh, September 14th. Okay, about a week ago, I noticed in my neighborhood there was one house that is absolutely decked out like it is October 31st, right effing now. <laughs> it's got the that. cobwebs off the top of the, I mean, all the big giant decorations like Josh has been buying. Oh, that's awesome. The big awesome. skeletons, the big pumpkins, oh. the cobwebs, the scary. It's this was a week ago. You best believe I I move into the uh, my new house tomorrow, and the first thing I'm doing that I'm mostly excited for is decorating for Halloween. Finally, right, inside, guys, outside, both, everywhere. You guys are uh, you like that? Fair enough. All right. Well, you know, Jordan Max, I've been calling for dudes to let this go for a while now, but uh, it'll probably never happen. What's your opinion, Jordan Max? Should dudes stop obsessing over their by God penis size? Yes, they should stop obsessing. I agree. <laughs> I was just reading about a Reddit group. 80,000 dudes deep in this Reddit group. Okay. Who uh, the name of the group is Getting Bigger. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> It's 80,000 dudes talking about and sharing tips about how to make their penises bigger. Stop. Someone's going to hurt themselves. Someone is definitely going to get injured. Yeah. 80,000 dudes, You should too. never take advice from Reddit. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> or, or just the internet in general. Yeah, true. <laughs> the group talks up and down, this way and that, mainly... Only about penis enlargement. I don't know what this means. Uh, this says everything from turkey necks to vacuum pumps. Okay, vacuum pumps. I've seen uh, Austin Powers. What the hell is turkey neck? Turkey neck. Anyone? I have no. Is it maybe if you eat turkey neck? I don't oh, know. God. I, I hope that's I what know. it is. No, yeah. no, I'm not criticizing. I don't know either. I just, um. I hope it's as simple as eating turkey necks because it sounds like some kind of punishment you might inflict on yourself and it looks like a turkey you see what i'm saying yeah i'm not finding anything on google other than like the turkey basters well dana but... you're the one who who, uh, who found this story do you know what a turkey neck is i do not know in, in the context of penis enlargement no i do not god help us all <laughs> stealth stretching what is that? well i mean stretching uh I think we can, I don't know, what are you hanging weights off of it? Stealth? Stealth. Stealth. You, you, you don't make a sound for uh, six months? I don't know. Maybe you're doing it and nobody knows you're doing it? Yeah. Dong keggling. Kegeling. How do you call that? Dudes can do Ke kegels? I've heard kegels and kegels. I didn't know guys could do that. Me sure either. can. <laughs> yep. Wait, is that, I have to ask, is that what you're doing when you can make like your your penis like move? Ow. Lift. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Is, that, mm -hmm. is that Kegels? Yes. Oh, yeah. I believe that that's so accurate. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> I've heard stories of dudes will hang a wet towel on it and try to do a dozen curls. That's the only time I've ever wanted a penis. <laughs> There's a, a physical therapist uh, I, I went to for, they do, uh, you know, all kinds of stuff, obviously, but one of them is strengthening pelvic floors. Oh. And she said part of that, you you think nuts to guts. Like you, you suck them in, basically. You try and do that, and that's how you kind of strengthen things down there. Yeah, that's, I well, not nuts to guts, but the, the way she's describing it is how women do it, too. Yeah. yeah. I've never tried to lift anything with my tallywhacker. And what? if anyone find what? I would have, what? <laughs> That'd be on my list of things to he do if I was a guy. He fishes with it. I fish with <laughs> yeah, it. Yeah, he casts <laughs> from it. He jigs. Yeah, he jigs with it. I caught a, a crappie. And a couple of... If anyone finds out what turkey necking is or t what turkey neck has to do with penis enlargement, interrupt me. And, well, they, and stealth stretching. The only thing I saw on it was just the appearance of the penis. It's, you know, just... <laughs> oh. I don't know how like deep a, I want to get into this, but... So deep. But it, it was more of the appearance. So I don't, I don't, okay. I'm assuming there must be something else to this it. This is some kind of misprint here or something. Because it makes sense, a little bit of sense at least. It makes more sense to think that your penis might appear to look like a turkey neck as opposed to this is the name of some kind of exercise or procedure you go through to try to enlarge it. So this is all these guys talk about on the Getting Bigger Reddit group. They've got a lot of members. Oh, man. Man. There are a few thousand. ground rules. There are some ground rules, it says here. 
false gain claims are a big no. So if they catch you telling a wild tale, so I I guess what they're saying is, if you have any advice on growing out a penis, it better be legit. If you throw something phony (laughs) up there, we'll throw you out. Who's fact-checking these? (laughs) Right. Like, who? Yeah. I'm, like, in disbelief. I have no words. Yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's something. You got to stop obsessing over the size, and you got to start obsessing over your technique. Okay. Agreed. That's what it's all about. Yeah, you can change that. Yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. Yep, um, it's not about what you have. It's about what you do with it. Yeah. That makes sense. But these guys involved in the uh, Getting Bigger Reddit group who talk uh, 100% all day long about how to increase their penis size, uh, they do say it's a great place to feel more secure, you know, that counts for something, right? Yeah, support group. Oh, support yeah. Other people group. know exactly what you're going through. Imagine you're spending all of this time trying to figure out how to, like, make your penis bigger when you could be spending all of this time, like, learning how to, like, pleasure a woman better. Be a better lover. Yeah, you could be a beast at it by now. Oh! Be a better lover. No, no, it, it makes perfect sense to me. God. And, and just... Uh, assuming, you know, I, I don't... I, just assuming what some of these lengthening tools that they talk about here, just assuming what they might look like or how they might feel is quite intimidating. Yeah, that sounds like I'd be scared medieval. to try anything. Medieval? Uh, yeah, you're yeah. right. A lengthening tool. What's that rattling around the back seat of your car? <laughs> no, it's, it's my penis lengthening tool that I picked up on the internet the other day. I'm bringing it home. I'm going to try to... Oh, you know something or another about this, I think, don't you, Jordan Max? They uh, they also have a consultation service where someone will evaluate your penis and give you specific uh, specific advice once they see how it's built. Have you not dabbled in that, uh, Jordan Max? Oh yeah, I do that all the time. What do you, what do you call it again? Um, it's called a dip rating. <laughs> <laughs> D rating. Uh, now the dude the dude it's, it's dude on dude evaluation oh okay that's different yeah the bro who does the evaluating is booked up if you go to this reddit group and you want to have him evaluate your schlong you're gonna have to wait it's that popular <laughs> that effing popular good for him you want to know the name of I don't know if this man wants it made public. Well, it's it's not a real name. It's a, what do they call it in the business? An internet handle or whatever? An internet code name? Yeah. Somebody yeah, username. Just, yeah. For, just for laughs, one of the members of this group is a dude who goes by the name of Perv McSwerve. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what? That dude's into some things. I like that guy. Perv Love McSwerve. It. He invented a penis extender tool? God. Oh, you can see him on Pornhub. He demonstrates the tool. Oh. I know what I'm doing when I get home. <laughs> I, I thought I thought we were just gonna begin and then end after I mentioned Perv McSwerve. I didn't realize this guy was so interesting. He says with his penis extender, he's grown from six and a half inches to eight and three quarter inches. No, he hasn't. No. <laughs> I if, bet it just came with a uh, a magic measuring tape. Where after a while, <laughs> it just lies to you. He has before and after pictures up there, Summers. And this is what this is the caption, if you understand what the, the words that are coming out of my mouth. So he's got pictures of the the lengthening tool, and the caption says. Make decent size wee wee into big pee pee by pull hard for long time. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> Why say many words when few do tricks? <laughs> <laughs> Make sure you get up on that microphone. Uh, oh, sorry. I can barely hear you. Yeah. Well, that sounds kind of scary, doesn't it, Josh? Yeah, I, that stuff makes me nervous. Pull hard for long time. Well, thank you. He doesn't explain how it, how long it took him to gain, for Pete's sake, two and a quarter inches. My lord above. If it works, I mean, 
good for him. Well, if it worked, everybody would be doing it. That's right. true. Yeah. And it wouldn't just be on Reddit. It would be a little bit more mainstream. And it definitely would be monetized somehow, mm-hmm. yeah. Please tell tell me that none of us dudes here, be honest, have ever thought about hanging a weight off your damn hey, let me Borrow that uh, five, that 10-pounder you've got on your <laughs> curl bar. I want. Please tell me no one's even considered something no. like that. No. Nope. That might pull it clean off. Yeah. Yeah, that, that makes me too nervous. Up at the crack of dawn, Jesus recommends just dating women with small hands. He said that's what he does. Oh, <laughs> Very smart. Half assed morning show, 93X. Yeah, here we be with uh, Jordan Max, porn star Jordan Max in studio. We were talking penis size. <laughs> Dudes need to let it go, Jordan says, and try to make yourself a better lover. Yeah, it's all about technique. I agree with you. Got a text from a female listener who says it doesn't matter the size of the boner. <laughs> That's how she said it. Doesn't matter the size of the boner. Just turn yourself into a boner machine. <laughs> <laughs> That'll get her done. Get it, she says. Get it. And I got an interesting question from a listener. Maybe this is, uh, you know, an old question. You've heard this before. I've never heard it before. Listener says, would you fellas switch your foot size with your penis size? So I think what he means by that is suddenly your penis is the length of your feet and your feet are the length of your penis. Oh, man. <laughs> That'd be kind of weird. Uh, you think that would be kind of weird? Yeah. I, I'm, just, I'm just trying to think of like how I would walk. You know what I mean? <laughs> I don't know, do tiny it. little feet. I mean, I'm trying to think. Do body and I had smaller feet. Would that be? You'd fall down. Yeah, yeah. you would fall down. Yeah, I'm wondering. Do I want bigger feet? Um, <laughs> yeah, you maybe. Son of a maybe bitch. I do. Oh, this, your feet would be even bigger. <laughs> yeah, no, no. There's no way. I got my feet. I, I don't know that. I think they're probably average. I wear a, a ten and a half or eleven, depending on the shoe. I can't imagine. That would be desirable to uh, many women. You would save money on shoes. You could get them in the kids section. What, what are you what saying about my penis? What is that supposed to be? Now, hold on a second. Why would you comment on that? <laughs> what do you know about what Cubby's hauling around town? Nothing. I know nothing about it. <laughs> That's an interesting question. Would you switch your foot size with your D size? Gosh, I don't think I would. Anybody? So, Dana, you said no? No, I wouldn't. Waffle, what'd you say? Absolutely not. No. And Nick saying no. Absolutely not. All right. Jordan, can I ask you about the latest dating trend? Yes, you can. Because you are... I'm single. You're single. Looking to mingle? A little bit, yeah. A little bit. You're always on your cell phones. You got uh, this happening and that happening. So I bet you know something. Well, we'll find out. The new dating trend is dexting. Uh-oh. Okay, dexting. <laughs> dating via text message and you never meet the other person. Ew, no. Oh. You yeah, got that sounds that awful. That sounds terrible. That you sounds got... like having a pen pal. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it kind of would Gross. be a modern pen pal, wouldn't it? A modern pen pal. All right. Yeah, I don't like that idea at all. You want to meet up at some point or another. Yeah, absolutely. Let's yeah, do this thing. For God's sake. I, I don't. It, we just keep getting more and more lost in what's the fancy word for texting and emailing. Uh, electronic messaging? Is that uh, the term? Yeah, that'll, that'll work. work. We yeah. just keep falling deeper and deeper into this pit of misery where we don't even know how to communicate <laughs> face-to-face anymore. I'm telling what's it going to be 20 years? I mean, I'll be dead, but what's it going to be 20 <laughs> years from now? Good question. It might make a comeback, you know, yeah. Yeah. back to the way it was. Do you think that actual face-to-face adult communication, and I don't mean adult by like what Jordan does for a living, you know what I mean, will it become a thing again? Yes, I, I do. I think so, yeah. It has to. I'm just so... I, I, I think feel, in some ways it already is. I feel... Really? Why do you? What makes you say that? I'm interested well, in what I makes you say all that. All the lockdowns and stuff like that, people got sick of Zoom calls and phone calls and stuff like that and, and want to get together more now. Yeah, I'd say you're right, Josh. Interesting. I've noticed. Yeah. Yeah, okay. So there you go. The, the latest... Jesus. Of these dating trends is dexting, 
You basically date over text message. You never meet in real life. It's common with dating apps. People would, no longer... Yes, who was that? I, I was just going to say I would never agree to date somebody if I didn't meet them first in person. <laughs> yeah, it sounds never. like a really good way to get catfish. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> You're going to end up on a TV show. Yeah. Yeah, you could end up on catfish or dateline. I don't oh, know. Biggest nightmare. Hell yeah, <laughs> dateline. It's really common now... Through dating apps, people are no longer matching with someone and then going out. They will text back and forth for days or in some cases, well, okay, weeks before. Eventually, it says here they do finally go on an old school in-person date. Wapple, do you have any online-only friends, like in the gaming community, like people you'd consider a friend but you've never met? Dana, you've said that about oh, Twitter. I have plenty. Yeah, oh, yeah I have a bunch. I have Actually, a lot. Yeah, now that you put it that way, I guess I do have a lot mm-hmm. of friends I've never met. Anybody you'd say you're close with? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I'd say so. Uh huh. And these are people none of you have ever met. Yep. Okay, now Correct. that you put it that way, Josh, maybe it's not that weird. Yeah, but but there's not that romantic factor with a friendship, like, right? You know, like it's like yeah. marriage, you right? Want, like the romance touch. just isn't there. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, exactly, Josh. Just having a friend that shares the same uh, enthusiasm for a video game, or a friend that follows your favorite sports team. I think what Jordan Max is saying, that's that's normal, I suppose. What you, but if, if it's a romantic partner, right, Jordan? Yeah, because I mean, like social media is like meant to be social. You should be. In- Engaging with other people who have like commonalities with at least that's how I see it like one of my friends on the internet like we're friends because we're both strippers and we both have cats and we both like to cross stitch in our spare time <laughs> I love like that. very specific hobbies but you know like we're friends right. we haven't met though we had plans to meet but it fell through I will say that so like I do plan on meeting yeah. My internet friend. Do you live in the same state? We don't. You don't. Okay. No. Oh, that makes it hard. How are all, yeah. the, how are all the cats doing? <laughs> um, I have two foster kittens right now. Unfortunately, one of them passed away. So I had three. I only have two now. But, ah. So that was really tough. But they, the two that I've still got, Jesse and... Calvin Gemstone, their names. <laughs> Calvin Dempstone. No, oh. Gemstone. Calvin Gemstone. Gemstone, I'm sorry. Yeah, have you watched that show, The Roy- uh, Righteous Gemstone? Never saw Not it. Not yet. I've no. heard oh, it's fantastic. So good. Nick will never watch that, I, I can guarantee you. <laughs> <laughs> it's so good, but that's where I got their names from. But they are doing great. They're very healthy. They actually have a checkup at the vet later this afternoon. Well, that's nice that's to, hear. Good to hear. Sorry yeah. about your little kitty that didn't make it. Yeah, it's too bad. It's really sad, but oh. it's life. Absolutely true. Dana, people are telling me you have a thing for a girl that runs the Green Mill Pizza Twitter. <laughs> I don't know who runs the Twitter, but I interact with the Green Mill Twitter all the time. All I right. love the Green Mill. I think I know who runs it. Well, oh, tell yeah. them they do a great job. Gonna, uh, so there's no uh, flirtation? <laughs> I'm going to send a text real quick and find out. (laughs) (laughs) That would be like Dana meeting one of his idols. (laughs) The person who runs the Twitter account for Green Mill. You seem to have a lot of those relationships with with those type of accounts on Twitter. I love it. Yeah, I do, actually. I think about it. Can you ask him why they got rid of the location in uh, Egan? Just, just say simply, not cool. (laughs) Not cool. I know. I love it. That's the one I grew up with, obviously. So I'm from Egan. I grew up with the one, well, the Roseville one. Um, they closed that one down. I grew up with the one in Shoreview. Oh, yeah. I love that desert fire pasta. <laughs> the out rolling to reverse. Oh. Yeah, all right. I've, everyone's shouting out their green mill. Shout out to the green mill in Blaine. <laughs> <laughs> and this has been the 93X Half Fast Morning Show. Brought to you by Green Mill. <laughs> yeah, you, know, you do hear Dana mention friends quite a bit, and they are. Twitter friends, people yeah. you met on Twitter. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Met, met a lot of friends on Twitter. He goes that route, absolutely. Jordan Max, thank you for your time. 
Thank you for having me. And we hope to see you in a couple weeks. Absolutely. Yes, you're a wonderful guest. Look forward to seeing you in a couple weeks. Thank you. Our friend dog grooming anal gland expressing Jesus is congratulating her husband. Started a new journey yesterday and said she's proud of him. Congratulations to Peanuts Jesus, a year sober today. Way to go. Psychedelic race car Jesus sent in a shout out to Chloe celebrating a birthday with friends at the North Shore this weekend. And happy 23rd to Teddy from Scenic Mojob Jesus. The 93X and FS Morning Show. 93. The 93X Half Ass Morning Show podcast is sponsored by Standard Heating and Air Conditioning. New episodes drop each weekday. If your podcast platform has ratings, go ahead and give us five stars and uh, maybe give our enemies one. Thanks, and here's a word from our sponsor. Regular furnace maintenance can be your wallet's best friend. Slashing energy bills and warding off those inconvenient breakdowns that seem to strike at the worst moments. Don't leave it to chance. Schedule your tune-up today at standardheating.com.